Welcome back to Pulling the Trigger, our very small but still somewhat precious little podcast where me, Stefan, and Mexi go through all of Studio Trigger's uh, filmography, d- discography, televisionology, whatever, and discuss about it. We've gone through uh, pretty much everything or almost everything of the main series. We got caught up to Dinah Zenon in the last episode. And like we mentioned in the last episode, Trigger had another project that they did in 2021. A very interesting one. One that I don't think anyone really expected, but was very surprised to see. Which is that they were part of a little project from a uh, from a, from an independent studio with a very minor uh, like film franchise that you probably haven't heard of. It's a thing called uh, a, a Star Wars Visions, and, and and because I said the word Star War, I had to get it. I had to get some help with us. So look over there. It's David T. Lurker. Ah. Star Wars. Oh, I love Star Wars. I, it's got it's got it's got the droids and then they do the flips and it's all. Oh. Hello. Why does David all of a sudden turn New Jersey in when we bring up Star Wars? It happens every time. Star Wars. Hey, I'm a Star War over here. <laughs> Not, not you too. I can't handle two Northeasterners here in this podcast. It's not happening. No. If, if any of you are familiar with, if either either you watched or you just kind of scrolled past on the YouTube thing, seeing it and being like, "Damn, I'm not watching that." Is that me and David kind of have a thing with uh, with our Star Wars stuff? Like we 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 both did a over three hour long video uh, a couple years back where we talked about. The Mandalorian season two uh, and all other things Star Wars adjacent around that time period. Uh, so like we 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 like we really like the Star War and because we have I also thought that I felt that since it, it feel if it would feel a bit weird to just only talk about the Trigger Star Wars stuff for this and just kind of isolate the rest of it because it'd be like. Like, I feel like it'd be too kind of short, and especially because, oh, like, we're going to have, so we like we're, 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 we were going to watch the rest of it, too, so we'd want to talk about that as well. So I thought, hey, yeah, let, let's just, let me, let me, it's our podcast, I'm going to stretch the concept of Trigger and just make this a an anime podcast, and then also kind of crossbreed it with our Star Wars podcast, like, <laughs> video podcast thing, and just now, now this is a freaky fungus of, of an episode that's gonna at some point consume all of ftcr and no one will know <laughs> jesus well, that sounds uh, pretty intense a little scary i mean I I, i'm glad we're at least going to talk about all the different uh volumes anthology shorts that has to do with vi- visions i mean yeah even though we are mostly focusing on trigger here i think it is really super interesting and it's probably like the most interesting thing about talking about visions is the fact that this was basically a collection of stories of pieces of animations that were all simultaneously released um all set in star wars but from the perspective of anime studios which i think was that alone is worth talking about alone because i mean we all know star wars not me i actually don't like the fact that i'm gonna be here while y'all have talked literal hours on star wars i mean like i know star wars like let's put it this way I don't remember the original trilogy without commercials. I watched the prequel trilogy in theaters. I watched the seventh movie. I don't remember the title. And then I have not seen the eighth or the ninth movie. So, I mean, I I know what a lightsaber is, but honestly, I didn't know about much of the mechanics of a lightsaber until I actually watched this. And, like, honestly, seems like uh, Visions was way more concerned about, like, the history and function of a lightsaber than literally anything else in Star Wars lore, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. The Lurker. Well, I mean, uh, sounds like you haven't watched any of the Clone Wars. Sounds like you haven't read the book. <laughs> nope, haven't watched that neither. Don't I, watch those comics. I don't know. Watch those comics. Read those comics. Star Wars is weird for me, dude. Like, I just have never been able to really get into it. But, like, I mean, I know people who literally have, like, the credit sequence for the first movie memorized. But for some reason, I just couldn't care less. I don't know. For me, a part of it just feels like a lot of, like, 
a lot of modern interpretations of Star Wars just seem to like really miss the point of it. Like the number of times I hear people like miss the point that the Empire are the bad guys, it's like insanity to me. I mean, then again, I come from a culture who understands the terrors of colonialism. So, I mean, empire is always a bad word in my vocabulary. But for some weird reason, people just really want to be stormtroopers for like Halloween. And I guess good for them. <laughs> Not really. In some ways, it's kind of funny. Where it's like, oh yeah, you you have barely no, barely a lot of like star like barely any Star Wars uh, like uh, information. Then we have David who has barely any uh, anime knowledge. So we kind of have we kind of have the two dueling sides, and then I'm just kind of like in the middle of being like of like the perfect Venn diagram of Star Wars vision was made for me of being like I love Star Wars, love anime throw it together and be all like throw it together have one of those things be trigger and then i'm like ah Stefan, you, you can't you can't lie to me dude like i'm on to you i already understand that this is your way of trying to figure out what we're going to be doing for the next great debate i mean i already got your answer there it is not a star wars debate i swear to god we are doing a <laughs> cooking challenge i don't care if we end up burning down the entire convention center i am out cooking every single one of you fuckers on this channel we're gonna cook star wars instead <laughs> <laughs> we literally like find some like old like Star Wars cookie tin that has probably decomposed in a tin and we just try to cook it today. And we implode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To, so to, to quickly explain what exactly for just for anybody yep. who's listening for who doesn't know exactly what Visions is, is Visions, yeah, for lack of a better term, is anime Star Wars. It's Lucasfilm con Lucasfilm contacted seven uh anime studios and were basically like here make a star they, they, they basically pull pull the bluth and be like here's 20 bucks go see a star war <laughs> only only replace 20 bucks with a couple million and just been like here go make a star war and then so yeah they gave said they gave these seven studios carte blanche to do whatever they want in a 10 to 20 minute frame and which is pretty created... astounding in like the disney day and age now today that they just gave a bunch of studios the ability to do whatever they want with Star Wars of all things, so like, kudos for this deal being made. Period. It's also really like it's especially interesting because okay, like, they, and th 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 this is going into lore talk, which David will be uh, happy. That's what to he's hear. here for. Let's which, just do it now. <laughs> which is that so? So after Disney bought Lucasfilm in 2012, uh -huh. in 2013 they decided that they were going to basically outside of the movies and the Clone Wars cartoon. Everything else is non-canon. Everything else goes into the legends. It's its own thing, so they can just start off fresh. And everything that was released afterwards in since 2013 has been considered canon. Every movie, every TV show, every cartoon, every uh, book, every comic, the theme park, everything is considered canon. And it's like there's maybe like one or two little things that are like 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 there there's a like like I don't know like what what there there's that there's that uh that uh game show uh, uh hosted by Om Best like that's technically not canon but even then they have like canon bits in it. So it's weird like yeah like, and Galaxy's Edge is considered canon in a lot of ways. But the big thing about Visions is that they were basically being like oh yeah and this is all technically not canon. It's like in, in some ways, you can, like, if it works in the canon, you can look at it as being canon. But from their point of view, they're basically like, yeah, we just let the studios do let the studios do whatever they want. And if it ended up being not canon, we didn't care, which is like it was very like I think they they especially with how Lucasfilm handled a lot of development with a lot of Star Wars projects and how that canonosity has very much uh, prickled and prodded at some uh, development issues i think they were like yeah if we're working with a foreign studio and we want like a big thing like these anime projects to very boost up our like uh our presentation and our like uh, like how people like look at us we don't really want to do a lot of poking and prodding because that's going to cause way more trouble than it's worth. I see it also like I see it on like pure logistics on as well too because these were also mostly developed during the pandemic. So like, would you want to spend the extra millions and millions of dollars to make sure that the studio halfway around the world is following all the rules for your cartoon? Like, <laughs> honestly, just let them do it. Just <laughs> you're going to get millions of dollars back whether you check in on them or not. They're all professionals. They all. I mean. 
just about all of the people in any of these studios are obsessed with Star Wars, grew up on it. Like, they worship LucasArts. So it's like they pretty much had that clout to, like, kind of have that sort of enforcement. But at the same time, like, the free freedom alone, like, it kind of goes to, like, what, back to how the original movie was? Like, the first movie was filmed fully, like, on freedom, on just, hey, go nuts, go film in the desert, have a good time. And, and what's even funnier about it is that, uh, honestly, outside of one of the episodes... Pretty much all the episodes, you could say that they're canon and be like, yeah, nothing really contradicts anything in any, as far as I was aware, like, oh, yeah, nothing, there was like, yeah, there's one episode that's like, yeah, that doesn't actually fit in the universe. (laughs) What are you talking about? There were clearly two worlds in every single episode. David was having an aneurysm (laughs) by half of the time we were watching them. I think. No, that, that, that was the second (laughs) son. I think, I think there's a couple that are a little, uh. I mean, definitely the first one, I don't think so. Like, that, yeah. no. The first um, one is the very obvious, like, yeah, no, right. that that couldn't work. Right, but I, I think... Uh, yeah, we we, could, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll discuss them. Like, cause, yeah, yeah cause, like, if we go down the list, we can figure out, could this work, could this not work? I, I mean, yes, one can't for very obvious from the get-go. But the others, I think there are some that just have a very hard time working if we're going to try and accept it, so... <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and b- 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 because this is an anthology series, is that we're not going to be able to really discuss this in the same way that we would like all the other series of being like, oh, we look at it like as a whole piece and then go by it bit by bit. Wait, are and you telling would... me? Wait, hold up. Is this another grab bag episode? Is this just like what we were talking about when Supernatural Battles? Is this another Supernatural I mean, it... Battles episode? I mean, it basically is because I mean, how like like the, they're all very. I mean, they're all like their own standalone stories, so it's kind of hard to be like, oh, like we 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 can look at like vision, like we would, which which we are going to like, we're going to start off being like, oh, how do we feel about visions as a whole? But then we're going to go in depth in each individual short because they pretty much are their own individual shorts. It's like we can see, like we can see, like how recurring themes and like how they yeah, like how these Japanese studios handle like thing like on a grander scale, but for the most part it's like okay what is this story doing how is this story doing it's like yeah they're all it's it's that it's harder to say like for me to rank uh like visions alongside say the rest of star wars but i can like rank the visions episodes amongst each other because it's like oh yeah yeah there are all these short stories and it's like it, I mean, it, it, it's that kind of thing it, so. if you want to be picky i think you could rank some of the the two trigger uh, produce shorts you could rank those among the other trigger shorts it just uh, like you said wouldn't be fair for us to be like yo that short was nowhere near kill a kill level it's like well yeah there's literally no anime on kill a kill level that was kind of the moral of this podcast <laughs> but yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I-, I would say you pretty much yeah you would put uh you'd put the trigger visions episodes <laughs> alongside like yeah alongside their commercials and their shorts and their uh video game cutscenes because it's like yeah it's just they're yeah they're they're sh- or, or yeah or the or their other shorts that they've done it's because it's like yeah it's it's hard to put two 15 minute episodes amongst e- even even a movie it's like because it's still like uh oh yeah no promare would still corp stop just about any of those other ones <laughs> but yeah so we were just, just starting off like i would say like yeah we, i mean we pretty much kind of insinuated from the way we're talking about it but it's like yeah like i really like this idea of putting together all these anime studios giving them the chance to do their own versions of star wars and they all ended up coming up with really cool neat ideas of star wars a lot of them being like ideas that i'm like why either why hasn't this done before or at least like because there's so much star wars content so you're not gonna be able to experience anything like everything so i'm like oh like i've never seen that idea shown in a star war before so i'm excited to see that i like seeing that i like this new take on something that i recognize it's 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 a grab bag of star wars and i think it's a cool master class on how to tell these like singular stories in 10 to 20 minutes while also being a little bit of and eh, I think I think it's like the climax is a like a, a couple of them are like eh, I feel like they needed like they're 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 much too like hand of like uh, pulling on you of being like oh I just I need a bit more like instead of oh I want more because I like this so much it's uh, th- this feels a little bit incomplete I need kind of like at least one more to kind of conclude this so it's like it's definitely a case of like that's a very your mileage may or vary depending on what you're looking for but at least for me i think it's like it's succeeds far more uh than it doesn't 
I don't know, I guess on my end, since I was it mo, mo since I didn't really have the Star Wars background, I was actually kind of hesitant with starting to watch some of these shorts because I really didn't think I was going to be able to get into it. But honestly, I find the different perspective on Star Wars from the studios to be super refreshing. Like you said, it was a lot of uh, new ideas for me, at least, just because I being unfamiliar with the extended universe. To me, literally getting anything that is different than what I'm used to from the theatrical films to me was like oh hey that's actually super cool um because to me when i think of star wars i think of like how, what the movies mostly focus on which is you know the royal family drama of the skywalkers and the like galactic space battles to go along with it but like to me the more interesting stuff is you know like the rogue one type thing like the people and the lives that are just going on and trying to survive while there's like intergalactic space battles happening in the background so and you got a lot of that here in visions you got like different interpretations of like day-to-day -day life or you got an actual just like super hyper focused look at like a couple characters in the world um but nothing was focusing on i mean there were a couple death stars there were even a couple twin death stars but they weren't really the focus of any of the stories. It was all character to character conflicts, which is super cool. It kind of goes back to like that whole idea of like the original lightsaber fights weren't because the dudes had light up swords. It was because the two dudes had different ideologies and those ideologies were conflicting with each other. And it just also happened to involve wavy Davy like space magic. Like, so I, I really, I too would like, I'm look I like that we're gonna get to talk about this, but I do think it is super interesting how much visions as a whole as an anthology kind of highlights just how very similar like night stories and samurai stories really are. I mean, both in like kind of how those stories come about and like what those stories stand for, but it's super obvious when literally you have the Jedi standing in for either or and it works a hundred and ten percent of the time. So bravo visions. I like it. Right. So, as someone who has experienced a lot of Star Wars over the years, uh, man, uh, and also someone who, who hasn't experienced a lot of anime over the years, man, I was so confused by everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're telling me. Right, okay, so, you know, like... Um, Doing different interpretations, I mean that's fine. You know, you you want to you want to you want to take it, you want to be crazy, you want to be whatever. But sometimes I was watching it and I'm like, I guess I guess there's some Star Wars hiding in here, but but sometimes it really did feel like we are going to do something completely different, and there'll be a lightsaber to to remind you what this is supposed to be. So I you know I I don't know. I guess like when I think about when I think about genre, like there are plenty of different movie genres, but but Star Wars kind of is like its own thing because oh, a Star Wars movie could hypothetically be any genre it wants to be. Uh, mm -hmm. There, you, like we're, we're, we've we've gotten some exploration of that in some of the side projects, you know, like Rogue One and the Andor show, um, like that. There, there's some really good and interesting things like oh, you can do interesting and weird and crazy things within Star Wars. Um, so then to be like, well, this sort of has a sheen of Star Wars, but it's mostly just whatever the heck we want to do. It's like, I guess, I guess it's fine. I don't, I'm not putting it down, but at the same time I, I was watching and I'm like, man, it would have been nice if, I don't know, it felt uh, a bit closer to <laughs> To Star Wars as a whole, I I want some of the weird and interesting ideas to just be Star Wars, like in Star Wars, as opposed to we're throwing it all out. And oh, you can you know it it just happens to have a lightsaber. I don't know. Like they, I guess they're fine as they are, but it I wanted more Star Wars in it, if that makes any sense. I don't know. We can we 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 can go through. It's not like I hate yeah. it, but it it's not. I guess it wasn't quite exactly what I necessarily want. I I want to I want to see wild things in Star Wars, as opposed to, like I said, a wild thing that is all like pretends to be a little Star Warsy. I don't know. Let's let's we, we, yeah. Let's dive in deeper later. We can go. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, 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 I do understand that in some way. How you can like, yeah, like for, from a, from a certain perspective, you mm-hmm. can look at the stories and be like, eh, I see how you could like take the Star Wars out of it and just kind of make it its own story and be uh-huh. all like, yeah, like and it, it would probably like either fit just as well or maybe better in some cases. But I do think there are like, so, yeah, it, it, it's it's a very like it's a grab bag of like there are some mm-hmm. that I see it's like more like it works more than others, and like there are some that I feel like are very much like in that kind of Star Wars like vein of just being like yeah if it, if you took this story mm-hmm. and just made it like if you had live action characters recreate this story I feel like oh yeah it would fit fine or if it was done in a comic or something like that I feel like a lot of them they do fit like in a, in a Star Wars mold it's just like honestly a lot of the a lot of it like I know I know like Mexico uh, has t- uh, mentioned about how a lot of the storytelling does feel very yeah Japanese and I, I do can cons- I, and I, I do like see that a oh, lot oh no some but, of these some of these shorts yeah. are straight up just samurai movies some of these are just straight up like Kurosawa like all they did was just what if we did a samurai movie but instead of a hondo blade pew, like it's it's right. almost that blade if you wanted to look at it cynically it's almost that blade but i just want i was saying seeing it more as just you know showing the solidity it's kind of like you know how like fairy tales are sort of like end up being the same story you're using the same structure mm-hmm. and then just telling the same story because i mean it's what star wars lends itself out to be i mean you have the whole magic magic system that has the good side the bad side the selfless versus the selfish and stuff like that and so you know you can with that sort of structure you can make all kinds of stories so and then like i say that's that's what I at least appreciated from it was that we were able to get those different types of stories. But no, I could, I could definitely understand it. If you were like fully invested in like, you know, the whole like Skywalker, like Darth, Darth, this Jedi, that like, if you're like fully invested in that being Star Wars, yeah, I can understand that coming into visions, getting none of that, there being no Leia's like, yeah, you, you would be disappointed. Right. So I, I could see that too. Well, it, I mean, it, it's not just, oh, there's no Luke Skywalker. It, it's a, like, I, I like Star Wars stories that, you know, don't have any of the main cast necessarily. It's, it's, um, I don't know. Um, well, okay. Like, I'll say this like uh, of the of the two trigger shorts that there are. There's one that I really enjoyed, and there's one where I just looked at it and went, "What? I don't." <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I didn't I didn't like any of it. Like a couple of them, I really did enjoy a lot. A couple, I'm like, "Oh, this is fine," and a couple, I'm like, uh, "This isn't this isn't for me, is it?" Um, no, I, I'm on the same boat. Like, there's some of them that are just, I just end up yeah. zoning out and talking to you guys while we were getting through them. Right. So, well, so no, totally agree. Yeah, I think, uh, I think there's like, I, I, I do, I did like, but I, I really like, it, 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 they're, they're split into like a thing. They're almost split like complete into thirds of like, there's like one third of ones I really, really like. There's like the middle third of one being like, oh, I like these. And there's like the bottom third of being like, that was all right. Like, I don't think there's any one that I completely, like, dismiss, but there are, like, yeah, there are a couple of different levels, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go through with them, and then, like, yeah, I, I, as, as we as we discuss them, like, in order, like, separately, then we'll be able, like, we'll, we'll, we'll eventually, like, unravel being like, okay, this is what works about this, this is what works about this one, which doesn't work about this one, and then, yeah, and then, and then, and together, we'll, we'll end up coming up with, like, a, a theme to, uh, put it all like to, right. to round it all out just to address the jizz playing space elephant in the room because this <laughs> did come out around the same time as another like sci-fi anthology because that was like a thing for like a hot couple weeks like all of like visions overall is definitely more positive than the what is it the sex death and robots one that was the other like anthology that was coming out like around the same time mm. that one has like fully hit or miss like shorts this one is all still generally positive so like but, you know but yeah oh yeah so let, let's go into uh so the uh, well first of all, i was gonna say like i'm gonna save the trigger episodes for last since this is pulling the trigger so we should probably just kind of like oh give 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 studio trigger their own kind of separate little playpen so <laughs> Boo, uh, you just uh, lie to me <laughs> we're, 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 I'm, I'm gonna go through them in, in in order uh yeah other than the trigger episodes i'm gonna go through them in order of like their number as displayed on Disney plus like technically there isn't like 
there, I, I guess technically like we're going to discuss the first one kind of feels like they want it to be the first one since they really put all of their effort into promoting and like what they did afterwards for it. But all the rest you can pretty much just watch it. Like there, it's not a storyline or anything. You can watch them in any order. Y- yeah. So, yeah. It's not the, like the, other trigger stuff where you have to watch it in order. Could you imagine skipping episodes in Dino Xenon? Could you imagine? Like a television series. But anyway, yeah. So episode one titled The Duel was created by Kamikaze Doga, who's probably most known, like, the, the, well, they, they, they've, they've dabbled in a bunch of stuff, like the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure openings, they did the first season of Pop Team Epic, but they're probably most known for is doing Batman Ninja. And the director of the duel, uh, Takanobu Mizuno, also directed Batman Ninja, so this is basically, like, the follow-up to that. Uh, the, the, this one, just for a very quick synopsis, like we'll do with all the other ones, it's set in a kind of like a weird alternate timeline of uh, Star Wars, like a feudal era, like of of star of like the Star Wars universe, where there's like they have like Jedi's and the Sith, but they're kind of like in their own uh, like distinct uh, forms. Uh, it focuses on on this Ronin character who's just kind of hanging out, chilling in the village when a group of Sith, son, a Sith and like stormtrooper lookalikes show up and basically start causing shit. Uh, the Ronin fights the fights the leader of the Sith. It turns out the Ronin is a former Sith. Sith. He fights and kills that Sith. He's shown that he's been collecting kyber crystals from all the Sith he's been killing, and then he leaves one of the kyber crystals behind for the village so that it, it'll protect them. And yeah, it's basically it, the, the duel is very much a lot. It's it's definitely one of the most like showy and like visually like re- like that's really there to just catch your eye being like this is the style we're going for and then also doing a kind of a lot of weird things that I absolutely love that I know everybody else is going to say is fucking stupid even though it technically is but I don't care <laughs> and we will and we will talk about that right but let's talk about some good stuff cuz i mean baby that art style, like Stefan, as the only other person in the planet that I can talk to hours about about Mad World, you know exactly where I'm coming yeah. from. That this art style fucking rules. Yeah, the 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 uh, the sketchiness of everything, how everything looks like it's it's been coming out that, that that's come out of an old like it's almost comic slash wood carving, like it. Yeah, wood almost like that scratch word, yeah. out technique to it too. But I think it's like super funny. So I have to ask. David, because, like, on the synopsis on here, it lists that it's an alternate history. Mm -hmm. Is it an alternate history just because, like, the village looks like it takes place in, like, Japan? Because you would think space would be vast enough that there could be space Japanese villages. Like, those can just exist, right? Like... Well, I, I guess it's because, um, I mean, part of it is, like, the, the, the characters that you're seeing, right? You have, like, the evil Sith lady... Right, but she she's leading a group of who look like former stormtroopers. If you think about the history of Star Wars, it's like there weren't a whole bunch of Sith running around at the same time as the Galactic Empire. There were two, the Emperor and Darth Vader. Um, she So if she was like part of a failed Sith coup, but hey, there's Empire stormtroopers running around and you have R2 units and there are a couple of like the random characters in the in the village who you know look like um god i can't remember their names but there are there are characters that are like oh they look like characters we've seen in the original trilogy it's it's very much like oh it's that it's that mesh of these things don't fit together when there were a bunch of sith Uh, there was no empire you know technology might have looked a little different um, You're supposed to recognize it all, but it's yeah. not supposed to be a logical recognition. It's very dream. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I'm getting it. I'm learning those. What am I knowing about the stormtroopers? <laughs> yeah, the 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 stormtroopers being there is the big uh, giveaway of why this like this is the one that I say mm-hmm. is like it cannot like exist in like in the main Star Wars canon because it's like yeah it's like like the fact that they are very clearly supposed to be modern uh, uh, Galactic Empire stormtroop like it's not like it's like oh they're like they're like oh this time period's version of stormtroopers it's like no those are literally stormtroopers and that yeah you have a different another yeah. Sith there it's like yeah it, it's very much going for like oh this is it this is a completely separate like out of time uh 
like version of Star Wars, Star Wars in like the Star Wars multiverse, and like showing yeah. like oh yeah now they're, and they're leaning much more into yeah like feudal Japan era and like following like focusing on like yeah those like creed and then you yeah you have like the and you have the concept of like oh like yeah you have this former Sith going around hunting down other Sith, which like that that which like like that that alone Ma- Darth Maul kind of like does that in uh, it, like post yeah. like post episode one stuff, well, it's but it, like they really embrace yeah. yeah. They really embrace it, like, in this type of story. I mean, it's also, I guess, sort of like a Darth Bane thing where he's like, in order for him to make the rule of two, he has to make sure that every other Sith is dead. So he's running around. Of course, this this Ronin type Sith in in this short, um, he seems a bit more benevolent than Darth Bane, who's like, I want to kill all the Sith. So I'm the only Sith. Haha, I'm the most evil. He, he's just like, I used to be a Sith. I'm doing a thing. I have my own code. I don't fit anywhere, which which is, of course, for his. I guess more Kurosawa. Like I, I haven't watched a lot of Kurosawa, but I mean, this is definitely just Kurosawa with a lightsaber, and which you could argue Star <laughs> Wars it? kind of was, but this is like the ultimate. This is going all the way back around. So yeah, I mean, yeah. Very <laughs> much before recording, Visions is just Star Wars going back around because Star Wars was inspired by Kurosawa and samurai films, mm-hmm. and then now it's like now it's a Japanese audience going back and. To looking at yeah, down interpreting something that was an interpretation of something Japanese. So it's like yeah, it's just it's just snake eating its own like tail, and then you see what, and then you see what the result is after the shedding. <laughs> but but like it's also clever too because you are getting an additional layer of storytelling because with him being a Sith, with him having like that Sith saber, and the whole setup as like a Kurosawa Japanese film, like you have those backstories associated with those Ronin type characters of how, you know, they either revolted against a previous Lord or they went through with like bad orders from it, from a previous Lord. And so that's why they abandoned that Lord and now they serve as a Ronin. So like, to me, it's kind of cool. Cause it, it adds a whole nother layer of to what what this Ronin character even is by combining the knowledge of Star Wars, of what the Sith and the Jedi are, but also of like samurai history, of also like what were those classic like tragic samurai stories, and then you kind of get that reblending of that. And so I think it's super clever. And again, that's why I say like I like that this is a departure from like the the generals commanding their army of stormtroopers, and instead we're looking at you know people what does the jedi code do to people like what like what is the actual war for the basically soul of life because isn't that really what is because is the star wars really the pew pew laser or is it like the good and the bad sides of the force waning and waving like what what's the real question there i mean star wars is all of it it's 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 about it's about the fourth force the jedi the sith the light and the dark but it is about the the common person person who's not jedi their their struggles like it it star wars is mythology and the most broad and also the most specific so i it it's all of it it can't it's not just oh the rebels fighting the empire it's not just the sith versus the jedi it, it it has it has to be broader and i mean the pre, the prequels helped open that up on a, on a general audience scale but i mean even the the original expanded universe stuff it's like playing with even though like yeah luke han and leia are still there at the center there's a lot of there was there's room to open doors and they've just continued to open doors since and it has to be everything so i guess that's why i'm like oh star wars is sort of its own genre um because it can be anything and everything I mean, there's a reason why, like, I wouldn't say, like, you don't hear it nowadays, Mm -hmm. but, like, back in the day, there would be all this debate of, like, oh, it's not science, it's not science fiction, it's science fantasy. Uh So it's, like, this whole thing of, like, yeah, I mean, it's, like, yeah. (laughs) Now we just call it a Star Wars or a Marvel movie. Right. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, now everyone just says sci-fi fantasy, because, like, oh, you do, we should just, we don't need to be, like, absolutely technical with it. It's, like, yeah, sci-fi, science fiction, it's, like, it's that kind of thing, and then it's got the fantasy elements, and then it's got elements of a West. It's got well. It's like you can have elements of like yeah, of like crime stuff, uh, of of uh, of heist, of like well, I mean, of course action, uh, comedy, every like, yeah. It can be whatever genre it needs to be, just in a science fiction slash fantasy uh, coat. Right. Which to a finer point, just because you 
had to mention it though we do have to like not forget not neglect the effect of western movies on like the original star wars themselves because pre-star wars the western was the dominant american movie genre like studios were making 30 to 40 western movies a year so you have to imagine like that effect too on like the original Star Wars story structure, character structure, and all that as well, and how that's now again being interpreted in visions instead for you know that more like the more samurai oriented kaleidoscope there. Yeah, which you would you I mean like you can look at the original Star Wars as basically being like kind of like the end of classic Hollywood Westerns as they know them of being like, yeah, like the classic Star Wars is taking those West classic Western elements, but giving a new spin on them. And then that spin has basically been like evolved more and more and more until now we've gotten to the, yeah, like what, what the modern blockbuster is, is like has now come out of that. So yeah. Yeah, you, so now like, yeah, so visions, especially yeah, like, then like they like, this one is probably this. And I think another, epi- another episode later are like the most, most westerny of all them so you kind of see this one now just being like yeah this is just yeah the low the lone uh the lone ranger that Mm -hmm. wanders into the town that's like that's like being oppressed and how he single-handedly saves the town from every i mean like the mandalorian did this like did an episode about this too so the mandalorian did an episode of this samurai shampoo did an episode of this uh ruroni kenshin did an episode of this like there's been a lot of episodes of this but man I don't know how many other times have done this have involved a lightsaber umbrella. Yes! Yes! The lightsaber umbrella! We, we looked it up. It's called a parasol. The lightsaber <laughs> parasol. Damn uh, it, Peach. <laughs> that's right. This I is tried just... to look up the, the goddamn thing and I couldn't find it because I kept looking up an umbrella. And then yeah. it, 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 we had to, it's because it's the wrong fucking word. Right. It's a parasol, I, obviously. God. Did you know, umbrellas, I'm the didn't exi- umbrellas didn't exist in alternate history feudal space. No, no, this is. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, and it's also not the only umbrella used in like visions either. There's one in a whole other episode that's used for like magic purposes as well. So <laughs> I guess we're just gonna chalk that up to this being anime. Like I know this 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 is probably what this is gonna end up being here is less about explaining Star Wars and more just about me having to apologize for anime. But yeah, just 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 just, yeah, just despite the artistry of like yeah, just the, the really like the the interesting and the intricate like storytelling that this thing does, the thing that it also has the other Star Wars thing of just making you really giddy over something stupid of being like yes, a a a lightsaber a lightsaber umbrella is completely impractical and makes no sense, but it's still so cool of just plugging your lightsaber in and then it's just other lightsabers just shoot out lights and it's just they all go out all over the place and it's just. Like it's so, twist. so dumb. Like the whole weapon just seems the the whole idea just is surrounding around the one move of I could stab it in someone and then open the umbrella. But like other than that, like what the hell is it? Uh, it's uh yeah, it's an umbrella. I don't know what uh, you you put it in. Uh, maybe there's like a complicated series of mirrors inside that that redirect the the blade, or uh. <laughs> I uh... well, no, like I, I guess like it's also made from harvested blades. So both main characters are like blade slash crystal harvesters and have taken down other people. But I mean that goes down to like the the old TV trope where they would have like parts of like other samurai swords and shit. So you you know, and and to me I that's this is gonna carry on through the rest of visions. And I probably could say this at the beginning too. Is the thing I also really find really interesting about visions that I actually like too is how much more the studios focused less on like the cool tricks you could do with a lightsaber or like the big planet destroying cannons but like visions wanted to focus way more on how lightsabers worked and like how they were made which you know makes sense with given history's thousands of years of history of learning to make the perfectest blades ever created Mm -hmm. like it makes sense but It's also just really cool to see it apply to Star Wars. The whole history and culture of weapon making being explored versus check out this laser that we made. It blows up moons. Yeah, that that is the thing that's really funny about Visions is that the Star Wars, pretty much outside of uh, a couple episodes in the Clone Wars, uh, in terms of like TV and movies... Kyber crystals have never been mentioned, like outside of like other like miscellaneous properties, 
and then Visions comes out, and almost every episode is focused on the Kyber crystals. And I think that is really like funny that it's reached that point of being like, okay, now we're finally actually going to show like these things that have just been mentioned in ancillary material for literally years. Right. There's... Although the. Although the uh, uh, the Duel of the Fates, the original script of Episode Nine, was supposed to be the first movie to actually like have Kyber crystals be a major focus of it before everything kind of changed with that. Right. I mean, you, you have you have Kyber crystals. Um, like you mentioned the Clone Wars because there is a an, uh, an episode or two or where where it is about uh, Padawans like learning how to make a lightsaber, looking for their own kyber crystal. Uh, Rebels deals with it as well because you have um, Ezra needing to, to find one for himself to put together a lightsaber. Um, there is, there is that deleted... And it's very different than like in the, the prequel stuff because the prequel stuff, the Padawans were like in a classroom. This was very much like samurai well, and apprentice. Well, the, this was one-on-one. Well, in in the prequels, the idea is that, that there are like the young like the younglings who aren't quite padawans they they are living in the the jedi temple they are being taught in classes right like oh there are there are jedis teaching them things like like you see in episode 2 with yoda but eventually those those younglings will become padawans and they will be partnered with one of the you know jedi knights a jedi master so like the clone wars the whole thing is oh here's a story about uh uh, Ahsoka and uh, she's finally been paired off and she's paired off with Anakin and that show goes through their whole thing but yeah in the movies you only really get to see like um, you don't you don't get that with Anakin he appears and is immediately partnered with Obi-Wan because uh, uh, Qui-Gon was going to take him you don't get to see the 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 classroom setting that he was all that would lore question yes is that part of what contributes to him being Vader? Is the fact that like he like got all of the skip skip aheads, and so since he didn't do any of it the correct process, like that may have contributed to like destiny and shit. Is that like I, I, that is? I mean, that's that's part of it. Because uh, the the idea in Episode One is, oh, Anakin Skywalker is too old to start training, and you're like, but he's he's nine years old. How's that too old? Well, you find out they they're pretty much toddlers. When they're scooped up and trained, it you know it's so that they don't get too attached to things. So, um, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, it, it, and and to be fair, like that is kind of like a whole thing of like, oh, that is like, it is it is said in te- like I mean like it's like the general narrative theme of like yeah, the Jedi are exactly what? perfect. And Isn't it like, a yeah, corruption like, though? Isn't it that because they've gotten to the point that they have like a high council on high council that it's a corruption of what should be the good side of it, but now they're just a dark mirror of what. The, uh, the Sith dictatorship is uh, I, yeah because like the, well because the whole thing in episode three is that like Anakin's been doing all of this stuff in the Clone Wars and he's like oh I think I'm ready to be a Jedi Master and they're and like the the people are like they're like yeah yeah you you're 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 ready to be a Jedi Master we're not gonna make you a Jedi Master no and they're like why and he's like why and they're like for lulls it's like it's just the whole thing they, of, they, like, no 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 of, they, well I th- I think part of it is I think I remember them saying it was because they didn't like Anakin's vibes which is fair and valid I I think it was a case of like. Oh, he like he just became a Jedi Knight. Like he he is he is still a Padawan in Episode Two. Between two and three is when he becomes a Knight. So for him to like be put on, it, it's not their decision for him to go on the Council in the first place. It's 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 you know it's that last thing that Palpatine with all of his machinations for the dark side to win. It's uh, one of the last things that we're gonna shove him there. And it's like oh you're not ready to be a Master yet because he's still kind of prone to you know outbursts and like yeah, he's not playing super nice with the jedi right like they, they don't deny that he like is is very skilled and talented and get things done but it it's sort of like on that weird little level of uh you know the same reason why they never let qui-gon be part of the the jedi council they're like well you're just a little too out there they let him be a master but never on the on the council so they're just like oh anakin you're not ready yet to be a master even though you are we have been ordered to let you on here so it, it just and it just fuels into his own worry and insecurity and, and thinking that the jedi are corrupted and him being him being swayed towards the dark side yeah it, it, it's it's a it's a uh uh 
it's it's a lot of privilege. It's a lot of it, it, like it, it, in some ways it can kind of be the thing of like oh like he was given he was and yeah I, I guess I guess in some way you are right of like oh he was given a lot of like privilege of being like oh like you're gonna be watched over him like you're like you're gonna get you're gonna be given special treatment for a lot of time and he's like like basically being like the small pit small fish in a big pond and like experiencing so much of being like oh yeah I, I I'm ready like I'm ready to do this like I deserve this and being all like oh like oh you know you don't you, you don't deserve this and then pal team being like yes you do deserve this so it's like that push and pull and like being like oh and there's kind of thing like oh, like oh the jedis have been the jedis are kind of doing some things wrong uh palpatine's doing some things wrong and then it's like oh it's like oh like oh like you have like someone like obi-wan who's like oh he's the one that that he's the one that's on the right and i mean the whole thing in that story is that oh they're kind of separated for most of it so they can't really be on their back so when things go bad it's like oh yeah that's the reason why but yeah but yeah with with, with, but, uh, with this vision. with this it's no. very yeah, <laughs> yeah with, with with the with this, it's very much kind of just kind of like yeah that 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 yeah. side of like being like yeah like like you want like I think I think the duel kind of does that like the it does the whole uh, ambigu uh, ambiguosity like the best of being like oh yeah like the, you you don't know like how like you don't know Ron, the Ronin story of being like oh he was this he was this former Sith and now he's going around as this kind of this legend like killing other Sith and be like oh you don't like you like you really you're really intrigued to be like I want to know this guy's story and like the story kind of like the end at a certain point of being like like you want to know more but you feel satisfied with what you've gotten which i do think is funny that ron the ronin is like the only like the duel is the only one of these that so far has gotten more expansion like it's gotten a novel that continued the story and it's gotten a comic like a comic one shot that's also continued it so i think it's funny that oh this this is one of the more satisfying one shots and this one got expanded upon so I, I think that is like a thing. Just shows you what you can do when you go all out on style there. Yeah, and I, I, I'm curious because I think the, the comic literally just came out like a month ago. So I kind of want to check it out to see like what's this. It, it's the same direct uh, like the, the director of this, uh, I believe, if not the director or the, or the writer uh, also wrote or directed like also wrote that one. So I want to see if that one has a similar style to this because it's like, yeah, if, if they if they like mimic that, like, yeah, the, the sketchiness into a comic book like that, I definitely want to see. Yeah, and uh, yeah, because the the the, the uh, we 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 watch. I mean, yeah, we we all we all watched. I, I watched like a couple like bits here and there in Japanese, but for the most part, I watched everything in English. And it is very like they have. It is a very interesting like dub cast that they have of being like, oh, oh yeah. there's a couple like famous names thrown here and there, and then a couple like oh like if you're an anime fan, you'll recognize these dub actors. It's, uh, uh, the one, the, the, one of the episode, one of the dubbing directors and casters was, I recognized, uh, Stephanie Shia, who she, she's done like a bunch of like voices and a whole bunch of things. Like she's probably most known for playing, uh, the main girl in your name, uh, or uh, Julie yeah. in Cora. And I also, I recognize her as being like, she's, she was, uh, the, the, the the voice director for your name as well and she's voice directed a bunch of those so it's like you can kind of see be like when i see that name and be like oh yeah i recognize her so it's like that's how a couple of like notable vas kind of sneak their way into the star war of being like oh yeah i see how they got in here but like in this first episode it'd be in like oh yeah the the main villain like the main villain girl is lucy lou which insane amazing and then the row and ronin is uh i recognized uh well i didn't recognize the voice but i know the name uh brian t who's like show he's like he's like shown up in he, he show he he shows up in a lot of things as like kind of like the badass he's like like either like uh, like as a as a as an asian villain in a bunch of things so it's like a lot of times it'd be like oh you need you need an asian bad guy you, you go for him all right so overall gentlemen how would you guys rate a bug's life but with lightsabers <laughs> A Bug's Life is severely underrated. Uh, better than it's also yes. one of my favorite samurai movies of all time. That's right, and uh, I I give I give it a uh, uh, lightsaber umbrella is at cool actually out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good credit or uh, a good rating credit. I don't okay credit. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, Look, could I you imagine a... if the general public had been exposed to lightsaber parasol? Like, people were so mad at just. Fuzzy red lightsaber. Like, 
if everyone had been exposed to lightsaber parasol, I don't. Yeah, I I literally <laughs> said th- I literally said this of being like the only the only like if if lightsaber parasol was in literally like if it was in one of the movies, people would have thrown a hissy fit. But because it's in an it's in a one shot anime on Disney Plus that not that as many people experienced, nobody cares. So I can be happy and like enjoy it, and nobody and I don't have to deal with stupid people. <laughs> Which, that, that is, a, again, another tangent, but it is, like, a positive thing about Star Wars Vision is that by nature, of it, uh, by nature of what it is, the stupid people aren't gravitated toward it, so you don't hear any Vision's discourse, and that makes enjoying it so much better. Dude, what if, what if this starts Vision's discourse? Oh, good. I, <laughs> you're funny. Well, they're making an, another... <laughs> you, think uh, you think they're you think you're gonna... They're making more. I know, so people... <laughs> they're making more Vision's. Um, they are. I guess it's We're supposed to be getting more visions next year, right? I heard what the idea was. Instead of it being like anime studios, it's just animation studios from different countries. Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was That'd gonna be make, cool. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I was gonna mention this later. Is that yeah? They confirmed that 2023 there's gonna be a second season of Visions, but rather than it being all anime studios, every episode is gonna be from an animation studio from a different country. Man, the en- people are gonna be so mad when they're like, "Why is the Empire the bad guy in all of these shorts?" It's like, hmm. Yeah, so there there is there is going to be another uh, Japanese. There is going to be another uh, one in J- from Japan. So we are technically going to get another anime one. But there's going to be one from India, one from the UK, one from Ireland, one from Spain, one from Chile, France, South Africa, and then one from the states, which is really funny. I oof, that's going to be the one where like man, just ugh. <laughs> well, I th- oh, well, man. well, well, I think I, well, it all depends on who. I mean. Like, if they get a really cool, like, American animation studio, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, like, I mean, like, if, if they get somebody being like, oh, yeah, I mean, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but if it's like, oh, an anime, like, a really cool animation studio that people like. That's, you know, you said, since, since we can just throw names out there, give it to Alex Hurst. Bring him back. <laughs> give me, give, give it to the Gravity Falls dude. Make him make Star it's, Wars. It's like, oh, and the animation studio, the the, the small animation studio that we're going to give a Star Wars to is Disney uh, Television Animation. I can't believe yeah, no, it. Oh. What makes you think they're not going to do that? Oh, man. Like, my, my dude, in all actual seriousness, what makes you think? think they're not just gonna pick themselves it's gonna be um it's gonna be blue sky they're bringing him back <gasps> it's, it's just minions star- it's just star wars minions yes all oh, right illumination no 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 you, you're thinking of illumination, illumination blue sky is the minions. one disney killed right blue sky is the blue one sky like, is we're the bringing back blue died. sky just to do uh <laughs> Whatever that star weird squirrel War. is called, and, I don't remember. I only saw the. We're gonna do a scrap. They're gonna do a scratch Star Wars. Yes. And then they're gonna kill off Blue Sky again. Again, just, <laughs> fuck like you. It's... Yes. <laughs> All right, now like the, I'm gonna like, let's go to the second episode. Uh, Tattoon Rhapsody. Uh, this one is by Studio Colorado, who is probably Colorado. most known. Who's Co- Colorado? Yeah, who's probably most known for doing the anime for the Bleach spinoff, Burn the Witch, which I think is really cool. Uh, they did the recent Pokemon Twilight Wings, uh, like little My animations. Dude, they did Penguin Highway. Yeah, I was about to say Penguin Highway, which I really love, and that was and, and, and if you're and if, if if you've watched anime on Netflix, you've definitely been recommended a Whisker Away, which they've also done. Oh yeah. A little too many times I've been recommended that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So, t- Tattoo Rhapsody. Uh, this takes place during the. Uh, I guess you would call it the Galact the Galactic Empire era, like the time between Episode Three and Episode Four, and it focuses on uh, a Padawan who escaped from the like the, the the Great Jedi Purge and ended up running into uh, this hut named Guy, who's basically just like a slacker guy who like runs a band. And then, like, several years later, uh, the the Gi is uh, attacked by Boba Fett because uh, Jabba's pissed at him that he doesn't want to be a crime lord, so he's going to execute him. So uh, the Padawan gets their band back together. They go to Storm, ta- they go to Storm Jabba's palace in Tatooine. They perform for him and basically uh, force him into becoming their sponsor. And that's, yeah, that's the story. Right. They get the band back together. 
Right, which which is all fine and dandy until, of course, uh, Luke Skywalker killed them all in yeah, episode yes. six. So <laughs> I thought exactly that, being like, "Wait a minute, this is gonna end poor. This is gonna end either. It's either, it's either gonna be poorly for them, or it's gonna be neutral, being like, well, he's gone. We can just go on with our lives now. <laughs> or they stay around until Boba Fett comes in and takes over the place, and then he hires them again. I loved this one, <laughs> like. This, because this one also has its own art style. Like you come right off of, like if you're watching it on the Disney Plus order. So like you watch the duel, and like the duel is really intense. But you know you kind of get the feel like it gives on what it delivers. It was very anime, but with lightsabers. And then you get this as the next episode, and you get the chibi art style. But it's still Star Wars. It's still dealing with like the criminal underground that is that takes place in that world. But it's also one of, like, the sweetest of the shorts here. Like, this is the one that, like, man, this one reminded me of, um, uh, like, this was the most, like, slice of lifey that was probably out of all of these. Um, like, this was literally just, like, the them, get, like you said, just getting their band and playing a concert to save the rec center. But, like... It was so good. The The song is a little iffy if you watch in English, but, I mean, that's just translation. You, you get used to it. But, like, overall, I, I thought it was super cool. I thought all of the characters were charming. I thought they were a cool little team slash band slash family, of course. But, you know, I, I did like it for just being that, that it wasn't trying to go any more than just hey there are entertainers that can play a pretty bitchin song and like oh hey isn't this where where pod racing happens cool and then then it's over i think it says a lot about i think it says a lot about star wars that the ep that the episode that involves like a near execution is probably the most light-hearted of all of them Uh yeah because yeah because i mean yeah because i mean i mean star wars in general is is, I mean, even though like we don't really tend to think of it because of how massive of a brand Star Wars is, but ultimately Star Wars stories are supposed to be very tragic or bittersweet. And a lot of these, like, episodes, all these stories and visions do follow that to a T. But, like, like this, but of course, like, there are, like, sweet, ep- sweet stories thrown in here and there. I think, like, this is, like, as the token sweet story, it's like, oh, yeah, th- th- this works. It's just kind of like, yeah, like, it's very funny and jokey. You have the chibi art style, which is, like, being like, yeah, you see, you have, like, chibi Boba Fett and chibi Jabba, which is, it's also a note that this is the only of the Vision stories that has recurring Star Wars characters show up. Like, none of the other ones have any familiar Star Wars faces, but, like, this one, this one's got, yeah, Fett still voiced by Tamira Morrison, uh, yeah, and Jabba. So it's like, oh, that is when you look at it as a whole. It's like, oh, that is weird that there's nobody else that comes back. But it's also that shows that oh, these guys they do want to focus on their own characters. And yeah, you see how you see in a lot of ways like with these with the art styles, like oh, you can kind of understand because they seem kind of out of place now. Yeah, huh. it is. Uh, this is the first one I watched because I was like, okay, um, it's like oh, you can watch them in any order. I'll start with number two. And it was was that because is that well no it was that, just why would you do that that doesn't make sense that's just could what you happened. imagine if you had applied that logic to Sonic oh could you imagine if you had applied that logic to Sonic my oh, dude somebody tried to play two before one yeah <laughs> my, yeah all right that's all I need to say to you right so I need to say to I don't you. know it, it just seemed like the thing to do so I watched two first and then I uh, didn't didn't uh, revisit the rest for a while because it is uh. It is very lighthearted and a little goofy, and 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 I, I was just like, okay, I mean that's fine, but I, I don't know if this is what I'm looking for right now. Um, I think also part of it is because <laughs> being being into Star Wars for so long, I always get incredibly nervous when they're like, here's a song, um, trying trying to incorporate any sort of uh, popular music into Star Wars. Uh, I don't know how often that really works. Like, there, there's just something about it that almost feels wrong. Like, oh, hey, they've got guitars and they've got drums, and it's it's like, okay. Uh, you think about uh, Return of the Jedi, uh, Jabba's Palace. Like, yeah, there's there's aliens, and they're playing songs that I guess are meant to be contemporary music. But, you know, you saw, the the, you saw this, the, the, like, like, well, I, I'm trying to remember. I get... What is the in, in Return of the Jedi the the special edition the, they 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 yeah, sing the Jedi so, rocks the song 
Yeah. I don't even. What genre is that? Yeah, I think it's like. And you're like, oh god, what is happening? I don't. Why? Why? You got. You got to commend. You got to commend Star Wars though for having gone more than nine full ass movies and not once going full musical. Like that's some. That's a lot of restraint for Disney. Good for them. I know it's not been them the whole time, but like. To have not gone back and just retroactively made the musicals. I mean, not even George Lucas had that kind of self control. Right. It was like David said that in in episodes in the special edition of ep- of episode six, they added a whole musical number in. So they did right because in the original yeah. version, it's like oh, they're playing like it's like Nikit. Nik- I forget exactly what it's called, but it's very subdued. It's sort of in the background. It's it's because like oh, we couldn't figure out how to do a full on musical number, so it's just it's it's just the the. the I wanted to say tapestry, the background. There's another word I'm looking for. The same thing, you know, in episode four, like that's just uh, when when they play the jizz, that's just added color, you know, to the world of Star Wars. Like even that song, even even what the, the cantina band plays, it, it doesn't feel like it's contemporary music from our world. It um, So when when things get a little too close, I'm like, oh, is this is this going to take me out of it? Um it, it did a little, but that, you know, like, like looking at it again, I'm like, it's, it's not, <laughs> I think it's, a, it's okay the way it is. Like, it, it's fine. It, it's just, um, it, I think it only really works as anime. If this was a, like a live action short, I don't, I don't think I could handle it at all. No, th- th- this is also, <laughs> again, this is also another check in the, it works because it's anime. Like same in the same column as lightsaber umbrella. Um, yeah, that, yeah. Certain things work in because like in Rebels, there are the um, the the lightsaber helicopters where they can fly around holding the holding them, and and it's like yeah, okay, it's animation. You you try to do that in live action, it gets a little goofy. I'm I'm trying to remember if that even happens in Obi Wan, because they're. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Well, uh, I'm, I'm pre- yeah, yeah, I forget where it is, but I do remember seeing like a Twitter thing, uh, like of course, of like so, of like seeing like a thing of people of somebody using the. I think it might have been Obi Wan because I remember seeing it fairly recently of people complaining about using a lightsaber to fly. Yeah, people are like, what the fuck? Helicopter? I think they might have done it in in live action, which is like, oh, okay, here we are. I don't know how that works, but I guess it's, I guess you're doing yeah. it. Um, They're just copying the robots from Final Fantasy VII. Right. So, I mean, you know, certain things... The same old thing. Certain things work in animation that don't work in live action. And even mm-hmm. something like this, I feel like if if this was in an episode of Clone Wars, I don't know how I'd feel about it. It it, 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 it gets away with it because it's, it's weird in anime, right? You can't... I don't know how else you can do it. We'll want to pin that whole point actually for next episode when we talk about Edge Runner and why, like, cyberpunk works really fucking well as an anime but um going back to like what goes on in this short and also in comparison to the last one to the duel another interesting thing too that they both have in common is that the duel has a former sith being basically serving the protagonist role he's protecting the town even though he has a light a dark lightsaber so he's in tune with the dark side of the force correct me if i'm wrong david am i good so far Right, yeah, the the red lightsaber usually, yeah, that's the Sith. Yeah, He's so a baddie. and then you have and then you have this part where I understand it's taking place in again different universes, different time frames. So this second part t- or the second uh, story takes place at a time when basically the Jedi's either had to go undercover into hiding or fully just abandon the Jedi way in order to survive. Yeah, but it is also interesting to see that it's a story about a Jedi abandoning being a Jedi and instead having an identity, a fully new identity in a post Jedi world. So to me, it's also kind of interesting to see a blurring of also those lines of the Jedi and the Sith. Cause I know the movies it's, it's also super not like in stone. I know like, especially like with the new prequels, there's a lot of like, who's on the good side, who's on the bad side, but like, it is interesting here at least that you are seeing like a good hard, like mixing of those lines. You are seeing Sith doing protagonist acts, but you are also seeing Jedi just fully rejecting the Jedi way. He's not rejecting it, you know, to be like another child slaughter, but you know, he is <laughs> at saying that like, you know, no thank you to a lightsaber. So to me it's like it's kind of interesting too that you we, you see that exploration of the Star Wars world 
All right. Yeah, I guess usually um, whenever when we have seen a story of a Jedi who survived Order 66 and is running around, even if they're like, oh, I'm, I'm gone into hiding, I'm doing other things, the story is always... Either, you know, like they're, they're still pulled devout, out like, of hiding. Eating. They're like they're they're pulled out. They they have to do something, uh, force like they're they're gonna do a thing. Um, I guess maybe there are a couple who who become inquisitors, but it's like either either you're pulled out and you try to do the right thing and you die, or you are incredibly depressed, uh, or or maybe even go. I guess the Empire's right and are somehow able to join their ranks, but of course are no longer a Jedi and you can never be a Sith because you're not allowed to go up to that point. Yeah, this is this is someone who just goes, I'm going to be a rock star now, and that's it. It's not, oh, I'm going to do this and maybe somehow defeat evil. They're just they're just into it. They're just they're just going. They're rocking. I just want to be a musician, um, dad. Which I can see how that can like a, be a big departure. How it can be like, how is this Star Wars? But to me, I just think I just find to at least have that story be told, be a part of something. If like this had been all a visions, I would have been like, oh yeah, this was too weird, guys. Like, can we like dial it back a bit? But having this at least be part of a broader look of different stuff. I like it, and I love it being as an anthology piece. So I feel like just kind of the length of what we got, this isn't one of the stories like with the duel where like, you know, you can kind of expand upon it more. You can be left feeling a bit more hungry for that part of the world. This felt very nicely like, you know what? This was good. This was fresh and fully satisfied with it. So like, I don't know. I feel like it, it didn't go for the biggest flips, but it, what it went for it landed and stuck pretty well at the end. Right. Hopefully this is not the band that wrote Darth Vader and his many prosthetic parts because they oh, no. were put to death. So <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It's all connected. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, 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 this, this is one of the, that, I mean, like, like technically the, this, this could be Canon. Like there's nothing really, I mean, I get like, I, I don't, I don't know if Boba Fett being here, uh, like, like, fi- like fights against canon or something. No. But I feel like, yeah, you, 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 this, this could be canon. This works. Yeah, th- this one could be canon. I mean, Boba Fett was hanging out with. I mean, it's 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 re it's established in Episode Six. It's reestablished in the special edition of Star the original Star Wars. Boba Fett hangs out with with the at Jabba's palace. It's just a thing. And also in Book yeah. of Boba Fett, that's the literally the first thing he does after he's like after he's like, "Oh, I'm free. I'm going to restart my life. I'm going to go back to Tatooine and take over." Right. You could do anything else. You could do anything else. And that's what you do. You're like, "Oh, <laughs> you hey, big to be Portina, petty. I'm going to shoot you and you're dead and you're <laughs> like and you, you could have I don't know where you'd go, but you could go anywhere else. It's such a weird thing to do. Whatever. It's it takes a probably... special kind of petty person to be a bounty hunter, dude. Like especially in space. Yeah. Although it is it is funny because that show is about like oh um, honor and codes, and it's like oh yeah, but I mean then you could have just done anything else, right? Uh, <laughs> oh well. Oh well. Uh, that that's a different. Discussion. You should just listen to more space music. <laughs> that's true. There's space music. Oh man, it makes you wonder. It makes you think. Like, are there is the, is there a Star Wars version of of Napster where people were like illegally downloading music and then the Emperor got really mad? <laughs> so then, so then, Space Metallica has to come out and be like, "Hey, man, that's not cool." It makes you wonder. It, it's it's mostly because I had just seen it recently, so I have One Piece film red on the brain. But mm-hmm. it's like that is the plot of One Piece film red, and I'm like, "Oh no, I want to see that. I want to see that movie, but in the Star Wars universe, because that'd be really funny." Oh no. <laughs> Of just seeing the mu seeing music, it's defeating fascism with music, and it goes horribly wrong. Jesus, that's kind of the plot of this little short. That was about what happened there. I mean, yeah, sounds about defeating right. Defeating fascism with music—that's that's the plot of Sonic Underground, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh it my all comes God. together. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you're you're right. Yeah, that is. Uh, that, yeah, that, that, you're exactly right. That is. Yeah, the un- underground does have a lot of. I mean, underground does in some ways have a lot of Star Wars. Uh, in this it. was the Sonic Underground's assault. Star Wars visions. Going going to going to voice actors. Uh, the main guy is Joseph Gordon Levitt. I mean, there's your there's your big star for this part. There, there, there's your big star, which is like. Mm. I mean, he does. He's fine. It's it. You can very much tell that this is. A, a celebrity dubbing 
for, for doing something. That, I mean, I'm pretty sure Levitt has done like dubs, like classic Disney dubs in the past. So he's technically done this before, but it's like you can tell it's very much a OK. He's he's not in his element. It gives me uh, Disney dubs of Ghibli movie vibes. Oh, OK. I- I'm, I'm dumb because I'm like, I thought he was in a dub. Was like, no, he was in Treasure Planet. <laughs> that, that's what he was. In. That's the Disney movie he was in. Right, that's not, not a dub. Disney in. movie. Yeah. He was yeah. much better in that. I mean, this yeah. was also like eight minutes, but like, I don't know. He even looks like him, though, which is super weird. I mean, it's no I know it was drawn before dubbed, but it, it kind of looks looks like no, oh no there are a couple other vas that i'm like wait that looks like they're dubber and i that 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 wasn't intentional but for some reason it does and that kind of freaks me out but uh the voice act yeah. the voice that i didn't recognize at first but then recognized after i realized there was name uh gee is bobby monahan who's uh louis from duck from recent ducktales uh, and I'm like, oh yeah it I is hear that. Yep. yep woo yeah yep. I, I heard louis yeah, i was like yeah that's louis the he's the evil twin triplet <laughs> he's the evil triplet so yeah, uh, what, 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 what would you say is your ranking of ta- Tatooine Rhapsody? David? Uh, t- two, uh, two power chords out of uh, a number greater than two. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I give it a jizz out of ten. A jizz out of... That's a good one. I like that. Um, did they say jizz in this? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember because I feel like I would have I would have remembered and I would have laughed at, but I don't I don't George. I think they're they're smart enough to realize yeah let's not say that let's pretend yeah. no, that the, no George uh, if I was given a Star Wars movie I'd say it all the time my dude jizz as a genre name no notes like absolutely perfect like he hit it ten out of ten on that like the the some of the the flavor world building of Star Wars isn't one hundred percent there, <laughs> but no, when he made that executive decision to name the music Jizz, like that was when like the pantheon of gods had bestowed upon him the gift of prophecy, like they, man, the man killed it. All right, the the next episode is the trigger episode, so we're just gonna skip over that for now, so we can see after later. So the next episode after that is the Village Bride, which was done by Cine- uh, Kinema Citrus, which uh, I rec I recognize as being the guys behind the Rising of the Shield Hero, which is a series I personally really love. They've also done Made in Abyss, and the director of this short, uh, Hitoshi Haga is set to direct uh, the third season of shield hero, which is currently in production. So that like that, that I'm least I'm very, and he's, and he's of course done like a bunch of other work uh, on citrus projects, like the first season of shield hero and such like that. So I'm very, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, in, I, I was, I was interested uh, like at least before I even watched from like that name and that stuff alone. Uh, so like the plot of thought of the village bride is that this also takes place during that middling uh, three and four era where it's like, oh, there's a former Padawan named F who goes to goes to a planet with the with like uh, with basically like someone like as a supporter. Uh, they end up learning that there's this whole thing about like, oh, there's like bandits have taken over a bunch of droids and they've basically uh, forced the village hostage. So they're like, oh, the granddaughter of the village is going to like give herself up as essentially collateral like, collateral. Yeah, that, that, that's the word. And so, yeah, so like that's basically like going as yeah so that's like they'll, they'll leave them alone and so they have this whole thing of like oh f's f's being like oh i want to fight back but i can't because i'm in hiding because of all that shit that went down but then eventually they all like the, the the other village people start to fight back so she reveals herself leads leads the charge defeats them scares them off and goes off on her own it's, it's basically it, it's essentially kind of like it, it's essentially just another version of the Ronin type story that we saw in the duel just in a more kind of like I, I, a more a more conventional approach uh I, I'd, pro- I'd like, probably describe this, this it. is yet another classical samurai story tale that is reinterpreted with lightsabers like the whole bandits taking the village princess as the collateral because the ailing village father like yeah no this is another uh, like older story this is again the sort of the equivalent to, of an old school knight's story like it's but th- but this one's pretty interesting this one's super fun just because you get the whole cultural flavor of like the villagers and their outfits and stuff um and then f getting more story in this than the ronin which i find interesting that we're giving all of the stuff to a 
But I mean, like, Ronan's story story was definitely in, like, the character design and how he had, like, the crystals on his person and the type of lightsaber he had. Uh, with with the, the Jedi in this story, uh, it, it, she has a pretty in- interesting motivation with ha- needing to stay in hiding, but it's also a pretty simple one. Like, you kind of understand, like, why she's not joining in. You get frustrated at her, and then eventually you get – it's a satisfying conclusion where uh, the bandits all get their butts kicked. I think this one also fails. Uh, this one's probably one of the the lesser exciting ones, just cause uh, not as many fun droids in this one. <laughs> like, kind of prop props to to all of the animation studios, like throughout all the visions, like they understood the assignment that droids should always be the best part of your Star Wars thing. Like they all of the possible charisma that you can muster in your character design needs to be funneled and shoved into your droid characters and if you don't do that then what's even the point of having a star war right the the droids we see they are the the battle droids they're they're not making really any of their own droids it's we're we're taking from the source material uh we're giving it to them there's like a, a brief moment where they have some classic battle droid banter before they're all destroyed it's uh Roger Roger yeah. Roger Roger. <laughs> there, there's a little Roger and a little confusion, because uh, like the droids in the Clone Wars are the ones that are a bit more like they're a little more the, goofy. The chunkier. Yeah. The they're chun- like, they, well, they, they also have the chunkier ones in Clone Wars. Right. They're like, oh, we got some. Maybe we can we can do a couple of lines, a couple bits. I think there's like one jokey line with them. They're they're all pretty standard. I, you know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. With and, this. and and not <laughs> and not to be like unfair to to this to this short as well too. But um, kind of going back to like how talking about like how impractical and how goofy like lightsaber parasol and all that was. Like to the credit of that, at least it adds to the recognizability to the at least the level of interestingness that that the duel has versus something like this, which is very by the books, like, hey, let's take a traditional story of a lone swordsman coming in and helping a random village in need through their, you know, training and skills of knowing the blade at when it was most needed. Like, if you take that story and literally just make it Jedi's, you'd still get a good story. You get a story like this that's super fun, super interesting, has really good battle choreography uh, animated with it. I mean, like, that's always, like, and, and that's throughout all of these. Uh, even in, like, the concert is that that battle choreography, that Sakuga is, mm, it's, it's nice, good, and spicy. But, like, there's not much to really latch on here in terms of, like, like, we were able to go on for a while there about talking about lightsaber or parasol but like what what do you guys have to say about f's weapon like it's it's rough like a lightsaber in and of itself is interesting so you can be like like outside the context you would just be like hey but she wields a lightsaber and that in and of itself would be the interesting point but in an anthology where literally all the characters including the lead singer of a band can wield a lightsaber you're gonna need to do something a little bit more than that to kind of make it there like the, the, there's character development within this story. You have the really good back, uh, the good side character stories of the, you know, the village elder and then the two daughters. So you had the sister who was willing to actually like fight and be confrontational versus the the daughter who was being completely uh, selfless and just giving herself up to save her village. And I mean that those are really good plot line, storyline characters that like in a full length movie when they're developed like they can be strong characters but in like the eight minute chunks it comes off a bit generic but that's just kind of how it comes off and so like again so a lightsaber parasol as impractical and silly as it can be combat wise story wise honestly you can save your whole goddamn plot there she's got space shoes oh yeah I'm 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 uh, you know uh, scrubbing through it. I forgot. Right when she gets ready to do to do her attack, her shoes do a, like an open thing, and I don't know if that makes her faster, but they do a thing, and then she cuts his hand off and he dies. Um, I also really like her design. Like I, I like I like her I like her mask. I like the way like she she has a I don't know like it's 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 funny that even though this isn't a trigger project, she has a very trigger face to her. Oh yeah, no, I could definitely see a bunch of you nerds maining her in Overwatch or something like that. <laughs> her light her lightsaber looks very much like a 
like a sword like a, it it is shaped like a sword as opposed to a lightsaber which is the beam of light there's even a, a little a little ripple of of energy in in the in the hilt like at the very top of the hilt where the beam comes out it it, it, no, it does I... a little thing it's not a very it's not the most traditional lightsaber it's it's not lightsaber parasol but it is trying to be a little different than what we traditionally see so yeah and, and, and it also having that the, the the yellow color which we didn't really see like i mean like this is like technically technically the second or third time depending on what you want to be uh mm-hmm. what do you want to consider uh regarding yeah that, that color so right the the lightsaber colors because they they used to they have different meanings now than they do than they used to in in uh in legends um, because like before, it was like oh, but I, yeah, I'm trying to remember what we, we can we can we can uh, we can we can talk about this lightsaber colors later because there is going to be another thing that's like that. that oh yes, that is there is one that actually deal. Never mind. Yes, you're right. There is one that literally is about lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, so we'll we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll save the discussion for then. Okay. Yeah, the, the, that's that's pretty much how I feel about Village Bride, which is like yeah, story wise, it is very simple of being like yeah, it's it's the very traditional thing, but it's like yeah, it's like it, it it's the same thing like with all the other like things like oh, it, visually it looks really nice. It's got mm-hmm. like it's got really good character designs. It's like oh, the the little like the things that they do have like yeah, again like 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 f like it's not as over the top as the the parents all but it's like yeah her her weapon is still pretty cool and it's like oh like you you don't really get a lot of like really detailed character from her but it's like it's like yeah i feel like f is one of those ones where it's like oh like you wish you, it's it's not like say with the ronin where like you're satisfied with what you have with f i'm like i wish i see more because like i want to like her and it's like oh if i was given a bit more time with her then i probably would and it's like oh and then like the guy that she's hanging around with is like oh he he's like he's like a good like decent like um like master like that 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 kind of like the master supporter type character of being like oh like helping her uh, along her journey i love that they gave her a whole ass q everyone else gets a droid but her droid's a human <laughs> <laughs> that's right they're just hanging out he's like haha i'm looking at trees what are you doing <laughs> maybe you should do something it's a good time. They're having a good time. Right. And and I guess this one is one that can fit pretty easily into Star Wars canon, just like the previous one we talked about. The only voice I recognized was uh yeah, like the the the, the side the side got like uh, her like helper guy, uh Valko, is uh Kari Hiroyuki uh uh Tagawa, who is probably most known for Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat. Well, there you go. I do know because uh, I yeah because I remember I was looking this up before that uh, F in Japanese is uh, a, a VA named Asami Seto it, it is Asami Seto who's like who's who's a VA that I really like like she's done like a lot of great work in so many like series of being like yeah Roth Talia in Shield Hero Nobara and Jujutsu Kaisen of like she she's like one of like my top favorite uh, Japanese VAs I also know her name because it sounds exactly like the 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 character from Korra Asami Sato. So that's why I'm oh, like that, 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 that's the name that I always remember. But it's like yeah, it's like the, the, those are the names that I recognized. Uh... And then just what just kind of one last thing because we'll it'll tie into future ones as well too. Um, is the theme too within visions is a lot of the studios picking remote planets or picking planets that are specifically in the middle of nowhere. They say are deserted or they say no one usually goes to. And I don't want to like say i don't have any evidence to really support this claim but i think that i feel like that has to come a bit from it also a lot with the studios coming on a country that is an island and you know having you know that desert is having that that people have to make a journey to arrive where you are or that you know having that history of also foreigners coming to their nation as well too so i think it's just interesting that that theme too of planets being kind of like a stand-in liter uh in like a literal sense of an island um and i think how they use that in these star wars stories is kind of clever as we get to other ones too and when we get to one of the trigger ones as well uh how would you rate uh the village bride i would rate it a uh the power of one out of Stadium 64. Uh, I'll, I'll give it one homage to, to Kylo Ren out of a uh, <laughs> film. That's that's right. There was one. That was that. You're right. That is that was. A, I completely forgot. Yeah, it's because uh, I I haven't seen uh, all of these in like a bit, so I'm just mostly relying on my notes. So a lot of little things 
are still like, oh, I forgot. So now when you mention something, I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's right. There was, she did do that that Kylo Ren thing. She did the thing, the thing where everyone went, whoa, in the theater. And it's like, the oh, pew, ching. nobody ever thought to do this before. Well, now everyone's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah. All right, that, let, all right let, let, let's go to the next one. Uh, the Ninth Jedi. The, this one, it, the, this one ha- is kind of like a biggie of who's involved in it. Is this one was done by Production IG, who is of course Which, a, a big legend of animation of anime animation. Who's obviously most known for Ghost in the Shell. They've done like they like honestly they have way too like Ghost in Shell is their main one that they're known for and they've done way too much to really like list off but it's like I mean Haikyuu's a big one Fooly Cooly uh bunch of uh, the modern Maybe. Evangelion movies uh they've Psycho also done Pass. they've done a lot of video game stuff of being like they did the cutscenes for Wario Land Shake It uh Kid Icarus Uprising Persona Five and to bring it back to around the stuff we know they did the opening to Sonic Riders no. <laughs> Sonic and and uh, this director uh, Kenji Kamiyama, like he did Ghost in the Style Standalone Complex, uh, Napping Princess, uh, the recent Ultraman stuff, the black the black the Blade Runner Black Lotus uh, anime that came out recently, and he's directing right. the Lord of the Rings War of the Ro- Rohirrim uh, anime that's being produced currently. So. Yeah, he, he has he 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 has a lot of like especially big re- he's he's basically he I mean he's the guy that Western studios go to when they want to make an anime I guess since now he's got Blade since now he's got Blade Runner Lord of the Rings and Star Wars under his belt honestly and this one this uh short could have been could have given the duel a run for its money for being like the centerpiece. Uh, short as well too i feel like because this one focuses more on again like more on uh the making of lightsabers versus an actual like fight amongst lightsabers i think that's what put the duel over in terms of its international appeal but quality wise my guys this one is one of the best ones out there and like this one might be probably one of my all-time favorite just like star wars things like yeah. this was probably the moment where I was like, oh wow, no, like I I like this. I like I really, really, really like this. And just all the characters in this, the plot of this, like Yes, I'm really oh, so yeah, good. I'm, I'm glad I might be like, other than one obvious one that you probably already knew when you clicked on it, this is probably my favorite just because of like, yeah, it it was a storyline that like grabbed me right from the beginning through the whole way i'm like oh yeah like this is this is some this this it had so much stuff i'm like why have i never seen this in a star war before and it just it gripped me so much like okay to quickly tell the story this takes place far 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 in the future this is after pretty much the jedi and sith have been almost all extinct and a bunch of former uh, a bunch of uh, either former jedi or like descendants from jedi are all brought together by this mysterious uh, man who is basically saying that he wants to restart up the jedi order and that he is basically ma- he has commissioned a guy to create lightsabers for them which in this timeline lightsabers have essentially been like they've been lost for so long that a lot of people don't even like think like, like they're like oh lightsabers are a myth and they don't really realize like how would they look and what exactly they do and because of that all all these people are very suspicious of the man that brought them together of being like yeah who is this guy why is he doing this it's like it's very it's very suspicious of them and then meanwhile the the man who is creating all he's creating all of like on the planet below where they're standing a man is creating all the lightsabers for the seven for these seven like jedi and he also creates one for his uh, force sensitive daughter and uh, and uh, and what's what's also interesting is that these lightsabers are they they change color instead of being a, a color like like where, where normally lightsabers are made with like whatever color like the kyber crystal is created by this one the light the color is dependent on the person's uh personality and their uh well more specifically their direction to the force so the girl went wait wait that it, wasn't already an original canon thing i thought that no. was like from the move that's from this 
Yeah, well, well, yeah, because well, technically the whole thing is that the the lightsaber colors are meant to symbolize the characters like form in the Force, but technically like for, lightsabers don't change color. It's like every lightsaber is only that color. You have to make it a different color if you want it. With this one, yeah, I, this is the first what? time I've this is the first time in Star Wars I've ever seen where yeah they have color changing lights and also that but a clear light like the clear lightsaber is one of my absolute favorite things it's like it lo- it's like a li- it's a literal lightsaber of like a lightsaber made of just the visual spectrum of light if just it, you don't see it but it still works exactly like a lightsaber and like that symbolizes the whole thing of like oh you're a blank slate you could like be the light the dark something in between it's like it gives you like the freedom and then yeah so the story moves on of being all like oh the the her, the the girl's father is attacked by a bunch of people she runs off with the lightsabers to go bring it to uh the the jedi people she brings it to them surprise almost all of them except for one of them are actually sith and then it turns out that the guy that they were suspicious of was in the room the whole time and that he made this trap all to catch the Sith. They all fight each other. Uh, one of the Sith, uh, ends up turning good, uh, because he was corrupted. And then they all form this new Jedi order to go and rescue, uh, the girl's father. And that's where the story it, ends. It up. has all of the and best, like plot pilot, like energies in the world. Yeah. Like for, for how much I love this one, I'm also like, yeah, this really feels incomplete. I'm like, I need more of this. It's like, it's not like I'm satisfied with what I got. Like, I need to see where this story goes next. Because, like, right. yeah, it's it, we've rarely seen like Star Wars stories that like really far in the future. It's always either really far in the past or within the relative Star Wars timeline. But it's like this one, super far in the future. It's separated from everything. It's like Star the the all these Star Wars things are like a distant memory. Uh, you've got yeah, you got the the ideas of the yeah the, the lightsabers that. are are like the, that that change color depending on the thing you have the really cool like setting of like the whole thing is being on like a planet that's like a, like it's like a moon that's connected to a planet that like shoot that like shoots out like a giant laser from it like that's like an amazing uh image like that, that's just like amazing like visual and like shot on its own and then you have the cool kind of like the plot twist of being all like oh like you're it's it, it reminded me very much of like hateful eight of being like oh there's an imposter among us and the twist is actually everyone's the imposter haha <laughs> they're all hateful huh <laughs> i i mean throw in that i also like how the main character give or take for this part is also not a jedi not an undercover Sith. She's the daughter of a man who has dedicated his life to uncrafting an ancient hidden technique. She's a person who just happens to be the most skilled in a weapon because her dad was obsessed over it. Like the fact that like that automatically like throws her in the middle of this conflict. Like it's the best fish out of water since literally Luke Skywalker. Like, I love it so much. I love this character. I love how, like, she, like you said, how she starts off using lightsaber and has no color because she only knows it mechanically. She knows none of the magic associated with it. She just knows that her dad knows how to make these. She knows probably the next most amount to probably how to make them as well and how they fucking work. Like, I love that. And I thought that was maybe where they were going to kind of go towards, like, in the end there that she would have been, like, the most battle proficient. But... I mean, it's cool that, like, they get to all be a team of, like, lightsaber wielding in the end. It would have been kind of sad if it was just her fighting. But, I mean, she stands her own for the whole short. Like, she is the coolest character. Like, she has a cool droid. Again, following the rules, all charisma goes to the droid. Um, and, yeah. But, no, I legitimately thought, like, I thought that was, like, the point of, like, lightsabers was, like, that they were a personality mood ring. Like, I thought that's why everyone had hissy fits over the colors in the first place. So, like, when they had her having the no light and then, like, changing over to a color when, like, her allegiance was more, like, solidified. Uh, and then the whole twist with the Sith. And then there's even the dude kind of going back to being sort of kind of good as well. Like, I thought that was the, the point of lightsaber. So the fact that that's not in – that that's from this is like, wow, no. So then this literally curb stomps all the original ideas of Star Wars and just completely upgrades it. So, yeah, congratulations, uh, Production IG. Like, you just made Star Wars way better. Colors are cool. Uh, <laughs> there are – let's see. I'm trying to I'm trying to remember, like, what, what the colors are even meant to – mean it, it yeah because if, 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 if their something. meaning was is really that 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 important though like i can yeah. understand why well, 
it was probably something not usually changed. But to me, it's, it seems, you know, if it's something to reflect personality, then it should be fluid, right? Uh, well, I mean, the, the, the idea of the, the red lightsaber, like that that changed in Disney canon where it was like, oh, uh... it's, a, like, it, it's a kyber crystal that's been bled. So it's like, oh, like a Sith maybe does a fight and kills a Jedi and takes her kyber crystal and corrupts it. And that's why it's red, which wasn't the case prior in, in legends, but I don't remember what they do. You know what? This is what's sad about star Wars and... and why it's, it's so sad that star Wars not being an anime is that you have to take everything literal. So when they say it's bled on, you can't be like, well, maybe that's a translation thing. And they just mean like your soul has to be corrupted on, but like, no, <laughs> if they are English and they chose the word bled, they usually probably mean you had to just straight up murder them and just soak your rock in body goo. It's like, damn it. Uh, well, I think before, I mean, when Star Wars started, it was just one's blue, one's red. Isn't that cool? Uh, probably was, there wasn't much thought behind that. And then they gave they gave Luke a green one and they went, wow, green is cool. And then Samuel L. Jackson really wanted a purple one. <laughs> I so want he, a purple one. It's like okay. It's like oh, we got it. We got to figure this out. But um, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, ultimately, I mean, because we always remember that Star Wars, in a lot of ways, is just kind of like I mean, for for all like the meaning and stuff mm-hmm. with that. A lot of this originated from a silly thing of like oh, oh this yeah. was a cool this was a cool color. The, 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 this is also a cool color. We could sell toys out of this for a, the, the, for a movie the, made in the '60s, and they had the technological skills of the '60s '60s. So they probably 70s. literally could just only Ooh. edit a blue and a red light and. That was all they could manage to do until one guy learned, hey, I learned how to make it green. You're like, whoa, buddy, let's – yeah, no, the most human of reasons to make millions of money dollars on toys, like he said. And, and even then, like like classic Star Wars – I mean, like the if you watch the original, original cuts of Star Wars, it's like it doesn't even look like that – it look, it look, it like the original Star Wars looks very clear – like because it's like they couldn't even get like the color exactly right. So it's right. like yeah, those yeah, it looked like it looked like a literal lightsaber, lightsaber, and a then light as slaver. like lightsaber, I'm and sorry. then as they tri- <laughs> and, and, and as they and as they were able to like clean it up and like able to get the effect down right, they're like yeah, like make it blue because like blue looks more appealing, especially in comparison to the contrast of the red, and then yes. green Which... is then the green they use to be like oh yeah, this can stand apart from. Uh, uh, from from Luke, yeah, like I mean, like even like when in in uh, Rise of Skywalker at the very end when they give Rey uh, the yellow lightsaber, that was pretty much just to be like, oh hey, here she like it's like oh it's a yellow one because now she's different, and then there are a bunch of other yellow lightsabers showed up afterwards, and it's like oops, you ruined that right. meeting. Oh well, we got to give it another meeting then. Wait, so where did she get the kyber crystal to make the yellow lightsaber? It doesn't matter. Run away. Look over there. See, it literally just makes more sense for it to all just be a crystal that just reflects your person. Like, it literally just makes more sense. Well, I mean, in, 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 like, in the Clone Wars, the idea is that they, they go to, oh man, what's the name of, what's the name of the planet that they go to where, where the lightsaber crystals are? The, the kyber crystal? It's like if, if and I have I have some key starts, questions about like I, the crystals right? themselves too, but I'm saving it for the next part. Um, but like, let's just focus on like how they function once they're in the sword, right. because I have a whole shit ton of questions for the actual rock them fucking right. selves. Well, I mean, so the so the idea is that they they go to the they would go to the planet, they would be presented with a bunch of um, tests where where it's like it's not oh the Jedi set up a test, it's like. Go in that door, and you'll find a kyber crystal, hopefully, and try not to die. Um, so it is like there is one that's being called, like there's one that's called to you. So the one you find, I guess, would reflect you. So the color would be automatic, right? Yeah, um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you are right in the fact that yeah, the the kyber crystals start out as like clearish, and then mm-hmm. you go and seek out the kyber crystal. You do like get you like. Do you go through your test, and then the kyber crystal changes color depending on like what suits you? So in some way that is that, but then that lightsaber is always that color. So you could lose right. the lightsaber. So, so it's very you, the sorting hat. Yeah, gotcha. but, yeah, but then you could lose the lightsaber, and someone else could use that lightsaber. And it's not like I mean, lightsabers aren't like yeah, it's not like wands or whatever where it's like oh, only one person can actually wield a, like a lightsaber, and it's like it won't work for anybody else. It's like oh, any lightsaber can work. Any lightsaber can work for anybody, like as long as like if they gra- if they get it. All right. Just how you can how you can use the lightsaber is like that's up to you. It's just Ilum you know. is the name of the planet I was trying to think of. Well, doesn't that just then diminish 
the impact of the Ronin using a uh, red lightsaber then? Because if anyone can just use any red lightsaber, then there's not really a dramatic impact to the Ronin having a red lightsaber. He's just but, a I mean, dude who could have just found a red lightsaber. The, 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 well, the, the difference with the Ronin is that the red lightsaber is still, like, considered, like, it's considered, like, the taboo of being, like, you see a right sa- red lightsaber, like, the red lightsaber is the is the symbol of the Sith. So you see that and you're like, yeah. oh, it's a bad I, guy. I it's not right. like to be like, oh, if you if you, somebody has like a green or a blue or yeah, if it has a green or a blue, it, purple, sorry, it's, whatever. It's just like yeah. I said, I'm still reeling from the fact that color changing lightsabers is just not an already thing. Because like, like I said, I thought that was what the, the dramatic effect of the Ronin having a red lightsaber meant. I thought that just meant that, you know, since it reflects your personality, if you use a lightsaber, it's going to be your no. color. If, I thought it just meant that, like, he's someone whose soul is aligned to the dark side, mm-hmm. thus still uses a red lightsaber, but can do nice, good things. If it's just that because the red the lightsaber's red, then, okay, cool. Then he's just using a bad sword. Well, well no, in, in current <laughs> canon, because um, it's like, if if you're a Jedi or you're using the light side, you don't want to run around with a, with a red lightsaber. This is not a thing. Uh, Ahsoka, Ahsoka if, if I'm remembering right... Oh, yeah, but I saw it like as a, as a mark. Like he's right. marked with his red lightsaber. Because uh, Ahsoka had to give up her lightsabers after Order 66, but she eventually gets new ones. I think the, the story is that she finds... The, the corrupted, the bled kyber crystals, and, and is she's able to, like, kind of heal them, and that's why she has white lightsabers. Like, like when they're fixed, uh, it, it's not red anymore, but it's not going to be the colors that she used to use, so it, they're just, like, white. So if you are a Jedi and you lose your lightsaber and you're stuck with a corrupted kyber crystal, uh, I guess you're going to try and, and fix it, because you don't want to be running around with red. So I guess, you know, that and also with the the first short with the Ronin, like that is completely different rules. It's a different universe. Like who knows exactly how those lightsabers are supposed to come into being because um, they seem to have multiple anyway. Because in the first one, he, he has a decoy one and then he kills her with a different one. So he already has two. Like there's lots of I mean, I guess having two lightsabers isn't that weird. Sith are weird. They'd have a ton. He already stole a ton. It doesn't matter. Look, it just. <laughs> or, or I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you have, you have, uh, you have, you have, you have Grievous who has uh-huh. his own collection, his own collection. He should have had more Amazing. arms. Of course, it didn't matter. They were all cut off. <laughs> but, so uncivilized. Yeah, but yeah, the like at least he was putting those to good use. At least like he was spinning <laughs> those lightsabers to be like a lightsaber wall. Like that's why like I can forgive that was because at least like the four lightsabers were being like used. Like when she's using the nine lightsabers in the umbrella, mm-hmm. she's only swinging it as a big ass club. Like the she nine. Think it through, Bernie. <laughs> I no, and, and I suppose just ultimately that like I mean lightsabers are a thing that like li- like anybody like it, yeah it's like w- the the lightsaber like color is like you, you can use that to like it, how it's created is connected to like your like your uh, yeah your, your like your person and if you if you if you want like you if you want the lightsaber to reflect who you are you will seek out a lightsaber like that but ultimately anybody can like find any lightsaber and it's like they can wield it in any way i think that i think that is like kind of an interesting side of star wars that i haven't seen explored as much that i wish i had of just a regular dude finds a lightsaber and he's just like i'm just gonna like just start using this lightsaber to do stuff with it's like oh i thought that's what like the new trilogy was supposed to be about like i legitimately when i watched the the new one in the theater when i watched movie seven i thought that was like okay cool that's what we're going for and then it literally fucking wasn't it was like okay jk never mind just to, and then just again to put a hat on a hat just it, it does kind of just show that difference in different cultural thinkings of when it comes to like the chosen special weapon you know things like wands and like swords and stones like they're weapons that are already made like they you show up you just it was just missing you the destructive power of the weapon was already like set and made and has been there it just took the the chosen hero to pull the sword hold the wand to make all of the miracles occur like i love so much with some of these shorts that were showing that like lightsabers have been 
gone for thousands of years. Not because a, a chosen one hasn't been around, not because there haven't been enough magical wielders of the force, but because there hasn't been a person skilled enough to make that weapon. That like the weapon requires someone to make it, and I I love just the whole cultural thought of that even being considered in a story in a star wars story no less it's like i i love it it's probably the my favorite thing about this short if nothing else the idea that that thought of like that the lightsaber doesn't just require the chosen hero that but it also requires that other person to like make the weapon to like actually put it together and have it be put together well enough that like it actually works as the intended chosen hero's weapon like is so cool and i love that and it's the most powerful thing in like this whole short and i love it that and also ass kicking people on like scooters with like clear lightsabers please way more of that you get this you get this episode's you get uh you get this shorts version of the of the uh the episode six um uh scooter race <laughs> it, it 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 was just missing an akira slide that's all it was missing <laughs> uh in terms of voices i noticed the big ones were uh uh, the girl's dad is Simu, Simu, Simu Liu, who is, uh, of course, uh, Shang-Chi, a bunch of other things. And the other voice, the other main voice I recognized was the, bi- the big guy who got, cor- like, the big guy who got corrupted and then became good again, which is Patrick Seitz. And being like, oh, yep, there it is. There is, there's Gamagori. There's my man. There's Frankie. Hello. <laughs> it's like yeah just hearing the, he he he's also he also shows up in a couple other episodes as background characters and his voice is so obvious that i'm like i always hear him be like there he is there there's my guy i love i always love i always love hearing him so i was like yeah that that that, that was the other thing i was like that was funny and yeah that, that is a kind of like a cool thing that they had like it wasn't just like literally all of them are evil and bad there was like oh there was one guy who was like good but got corrupted because he's like oh it's like i don't know what to do anymore they they they, they, they were essentially like a bad influence on him and that the girl was able to talk him down and be all like oh and now he's back and then his color turns to like i think it turned purple was that what it was was that what it was yeah cuz isn't that what re- cuz cuz i thought cuz that's red and blue together i thought that was also why he had like i thought this was explaining things to me dude i didn't know like all it was doing was putting like fanfic rules in my head like god damn it dude <laughs> right i've been ru- this this sucks <laughs> it's so fun you can still enjoy it it just is not connected to to everything prior and I- no i'm sorry guys like this is full head cannon. like i can't i you can't take this back. They, I'm you, sorry. Y'all, you, you always have to remember Harrison Ford's <laughs> words. Harrison Ford's words uh, when they were making the original Star Wars. It's not that kind of movie, kid. I'm just being like, <laughs> some not. sometimes things don't have answers, and it's the fans who are like, we want to give these things that don't. We want to give these meaningless things answers because we think they deserve answers, and then we just kind of have to, we kind of have to do some jumping through hoops. But eventually, we come something cool, and this one came something really cool. So I gi- I give the ninth Jedi a nine out of nine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I guess I give it a G4 out of 4. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a, a cool. I don't see ratings. Uh, <laughs> cool! Cool! <laughs> it, no, you just put a sticker right on it that says it's cool. cool. Oh, you know, it, it's, yeah, that's good. It's, it's, I, I, it, it's fun, it's interesting, it ends abruptly. Uh, that's, yeah, that, and, and that's it's the like, only thing. That's yeah. probably, it's one of the ones that is screaming for a sequel. There's another one I think it's like set up where, oh, there should be a follow-up. I mean, there's a few that feel like this is a pilot or the middle episode, but it really does just end. And, you know, I by itself, I enjoy it, but I do wonder if like, oh, this is really like, I guess you could you could say it's canon. You could say it's not canon. It doesn't really matter because it's so so far in the future it's it's got the whole breath of the wild thing yeah literally it, you throw it yeah. you, th- you throw something so far into the future it doesn't, it doesn't really, really matter fucking like matter. this isn't impacting anything that's happening in the, in the main stuff and so it's it's fine you could fill it fill in the blanks any way you want so yeah cool ninth jedi oh there's more <laughs> all right let's all right, let, let's see okay next next one we got we got toby A.K.A. Astro Boy, A.K.A. Mega Man. I mean, okay. A.K.A. Pinocchio. <laughs> like, like no, but it is literally just what if Astro Boy wanted to be a Jedi? 
All right, very very quickly. This one was this episode was done by Science Saru, which uh, they've done. Uh, they did uh, Ride Your Wave, which was a movie that I really liked. Uh, they did the recent Devilman Cry Baby, which a lot of people really liked. And I cried several times. <laughs> and one of my all time favorite anime, uh, Keep Your Hands Off Azekin. So like that one, um... and and the director of this, uh, Ab- Abel Gongora. Uh, he's tapped to direct the animated Scott Pilgrim series on Netflix. So hey. that, if that ends up happening, that's going to be pretty interesting. Uh-huh. But it's like, yeah. So we got we got Toby. This also takes place during the uh, the during the episode three and four era. I mean, yeah, lots of. I mean, obviously there's a reason why, but it's like, yeah, lots of stuff like to take place during that era. But it's like, yeah. So they, it focuses on a a droid named T O B I or Toby, uh, and he he's on he's on an art he, li- he lives on like a, a desert planet with his uh, with his like professor scientist, and they they go his around his father his father thing. They go around doing a bunch of things. He, he dreams of being a he has dreams of being a Jedi. They like they're looking to uh, like basically repair the like basically repair uh, like a bunch of stuff on the planet so that they can start re so they can start like basically regrowing the uh, the four and stuff like that. Uh, he ends up accidentally uh, activating a, a, a distress beacon, revealing that his professor father is actually a Jedi. He hides the he hides Toby away. Toby escapes a bit later, only to find that the entire thing has been ransacked and him killed. Uh, he starts to go and fix everything on his own. The Inquisitor that killed him returns, fights Toby. It turns out that Toby is powered by a kyber crystal, uses power to create his own lightsaber. He kills the Inquisitor and then goes and starts to explore the world uh, now as a robot Jedi. Right, he is his own lightsaber. Ooh. He is the lightsaber. He is the lightsaber. It's uh, I have... am all the lightsabers. He has. He does have. A, he has got some Force moments. All right. So, what did what did you think about Mega Man Eight, David? Mega Man Eight. I mean, it, it, there's basically Doctor Light in this. Show. Yeah, that was the thing. Right. Like, for, I, I really, yeah, I, I really, I, I do really liked it. But it's like, in a lot of ways, it's like I think part of the fun, like it's, it's hard to see how much of this is both like a ironic and unironic because there is a thing of like, yeah, you. Well, it's full you, homage. It's full, full homage. Because it, it is so blatant about being like, yeah, we're doing, we're doing Astro Boy, and you see it be like, you, you have like, you see like the guy. I mean, it's, it is mostly Astro Boy, but it's like, yeah, you see, uh, as a Mega Man fan, you see him and be like, that has a lot of Mega Man influence, and then you see Professor Mitaka, and it's like, like, yeah, obviously it's based on the Professor from Astro Boy, and I'm like, that looks so much like Doctor Light. It is. It gets kind of distracting in a little ways, but it's like, but it's still ultimately being like, yeah, Star Wars Astro Boy. That, that, that kind of seems like a thing that should have happened by now, considering Astro Boy in a lot of ways is, is like the inspiration of everything. <laughs> like, so it's like, yeah, like have, yeah. having Star Wars kind of take the bit from the Astro Boy well is like, yeah, it's like, it feels like, uh, it feels kind of obvious and... So, so to see, so to see it like in practice and being like, oh, they do, they do a cool, uh, they, they do, they do a cool direction of it. Yeah. Cause that's the thing is like Astro Boy's influential. Like it's, de- his design's iconic as Mickey Mouse. Like, so to not try and draw the parallels, like this isn't even within this anthology, not the first time you can just slap the Star Wars aesthetic over an old timey story and just throw it out again. I mean, come on. If if it works for all of those samurai stories, it's gonna fucking work for Pinocchio as well. Like, <laughs> but this one was so good. Like I, like I was, I loved it on aesthetic alone. Like I love Astro Boy. I love that like original uh, Devil Man. Like just all of that aesthetic is that that nineteen sixties manga aesthetic to me is super fun and super charming. So to see it with the Star Wars twist on it. Um, I thought I was going to be more annoyed by Toby, um, but thankfully, like, this being a short super helps uh, this one out. This I would rank definitely on the, the higher end of the shorts as well. This is probably, uh, you had described, like, three categories. This is probably either uh, on the high end of the middle category it's or it's, like, the bottom of the top category. Because this one, to me, I, I, I loved this one as well, too. Um First on the on the style, and then just on how heartwarming this story kind of ended up being. But I just ended up having 
a lot of questions about how like the crystals worked and stuff but and also how time in this one worked out but this one was just trying to get by on pure emotional appeal and it, it won me out um and then also like on how insane like there's this whole 3d graphic segment where it's going through toby's dreams of him being a jedi and it's so cute and at first i thought it was going to be like heartbreaking about like why is this does this android dream of jedi adventures and like he does and at first i thought it was gonna be something super heartbreaking that like he couldn't be a jedi or something like that but like i i super love that it was all like he was having these dreams because he was destined to be a jedi because he's literally powered by the same crystal as a lightsaber um and then like the whole thing how he has to find his the crystal and he just can't find it. He's searching everywhere. And he searched the entire deserted planet. And it's literally just like within him the whole time. So, you know, all of those fun little metaphorical twists. Again, with the, the Star Wars twist and flair. It's just, it's so adorable. Every like It feels very just, uh, again, fairy tale-esque. Like, out of all of them. This one just feels like, I don't know. There, I don't think there's any violence in this one. This one's probably like the more... Kid, well, I mean, at, 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 friendly well, well, one. At, at the at other the than end, you know, dead dad. You, but, yeah. but even but even dead dad's just a pile of rocks. No, 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 no. You never see a dead dad. Well, we we, 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 we also see him kill the Inquisitor pretty brutally. So, hey, I mean, yeah. not 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 as brutal as like other Star Wars things, but it's like, oh, the the robot child does murder a dude. So that's something. Uh, as he deserves. Right, I. Uh, in in terms of of Star Wars droids, I guess he uh, Toby is the the most like a person, isn't he? I mean, like you have C three PO who seems very person like, but there's still definitely oh you're a robot, you're a droid. Like there's there's that logical thinking or whatever. I guess Toby uh, definitely. Uh, steps over a line that I don't know if any other droid really has in Star Wars or I mean at least like mainstream Star Wars there might maybe there's there's some book or comic where it's like here's a droid and he is the most human droid he's more human than you deal with it which is again another interesting aspect of like how a different cultural lens explores different questions there as well too because i mean droids have been there from the beginning and i'm sure like plenty of people have asked the questions of like could c3po could r2d2 use the force mm-hmm. um R5 and, like in, in a non-ironic sense like in a like actual i mean it does bleed into the whole like personhood of robots question which is already a huge messy question in and of itself but like no i because i mean we have all these medias of like where you know it, it's it's the whole pygmalion thing of where we can make something and love it to the point that we imbue life into it and in what that actually means can vary. And then that's where fiction can go like, well, then, yeah, if you can make something and make it this close to life, then can it, you know, touch touch the god of the world? If the Force is basically the god of the Star Wars world, can, can a robot channel it? And I think it's, like, super interesting that it's not even, like, just a hint of it that, like, they did a whole ass little story where it's, like, you know, if if the robot believes and the robot has love and the robot was designed for it, apparently, also, then, yes, then the father's love can help the robot to be a true Padawan and be one with the Force. Like, I thought it was super fun, too, that, like, in the, the short, like, when he sees his, his dead dad's uh, Force ghost... Like, his, his, his dad's like, you are one with the Force. Like, it's a whole fully, like, doesn't matter if you are made of, of droid parts, but that, like, it's that humanity aspect instead that truly puts you, it makes you one with the Force. And it's like, oh, that's, that's super cute and lovely. Yeah. But, but what do you think? Is, like, is it wrong for, for, for a droid to be able to use the Force? I don't, th- like, I don't is, think it's... What do you say? <laughs> uh, it, it's a little odd, but I don't think it's wrong. You just, you have to... Because I, I guess the the worry is like, oh, then you could build like ten thousand droids and they're all Jedi or Sith, and it gets True. like you can get you can go really weird and wonky with it. If if it this has is to the be series, something though, that has a Clone War, though it does have a a Clone War, yes. <laughs> but I guess like if you found out that all the battle droids could wield the Force, um, things escalate and things get weird and. Uh, if you're if you're giving the force to a droid, I feel like it has to be in very specific, very special 
circumstances. Like there's something about that specific droid that makes it. Um, is this yeah. an example of the force playing favorites? Because like how the force like ooh forces twins to happen. Is this another like like chess move of the force being like you know what? <laughs> Let's Dro- just do it. Force droid, your your move, dark side, and then dark side's like all right. Quintuplets. Quint- <laughs> it, can, it can be something like that. Uh, like, I, I know. Okay. I know. I, I always picture. I always picture the force. Like weird aside. I always picture the force as being like in Persona Two. You basically have uh, Philemon and Narahotep basically doing like an intergalactic like chess game, and like you have multi games that are just these two gods fucking reality to have like the ultimate back and forth. And I just pictured the force as just being one entity just doing that, but with itself. All right. Well, the, the force is very mysterious. It surrounds us. It penetrates us. It binds the universe together. Uh, that describes it, a lot of stuff. It, it all, it also, uh, I mean, it also proves that it also proves that it's like, Oh, like how does this robot have M blood? Hmm. The robot can't have M blood, so it's like, yeah, the worse. force is the the force is just a thing that uh, that that just I, it, to be it fair, exists throughout the universe. And way, mm-hmm. way to bring that up. Way to bring it up that for all of the lore explorations exploration for how lightsabers work and function and are built and are preserved, there is zero consideration for a single goddamn midichlorian in any of these fucking shorts like just no studio gave any fucks about that nobody wants to talk about midichlorians well what because it uh, what what because i uh was it in if the mandalorian does at one point uh allude to midichlorians but they refer to it as m blood so it's like they are kind of like tiptoeing like they don't want to say the m war they literally like have a moment moment in the series where they they don't they tiptoe around not saying the m word which i think is really funny and speaks to how they're like yeah we don't want to reference that we don't think it's a good idea we're just gonna be just, like yeah the just making karma just- like it was a it yeah. was a okay when it was just space karma magic. That's all it needs to be. Yeah, I'm, well, well, I mean, there, there there is the whole. I mean, that that was the whole thing that led to the discourse in the sequel trilogy, which is regarding the whole thing of like, oh, like the like, what is the force and like who gets the power from the force of being a like, oh, Ray has to be somebody special because how can someone like her be so powerful and be so uh, intuitive in the force if she didn't have if she doesn't have the right bloodline? Again, it just because of intergalactic chance like it just makes more right. sense if it's just like karma war like an intergalactic just war of itself i mean most jedis wouldn't have had to deal with the bloodline because the whole thing about you know jedi they're they, they're they're found when they're super young they're raised in the temple they don't have proper relationships they don't get married and have kids like that means jedi always have to be random so the idea of a bloodline is really just people over obsessing over the fact that Darth Vader is the father of Luke and Leia. Like it does the, 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 the blood or family line isn't the most important thing in the overall scope. It's, it's just important yeah. in, in like those to me, it's just a minor. It was just proximity for the force. The force mm-hmm. just needed to correct itself. The soonest, the quickest, the fastest. And it was just like, all right. Yeah, which is why it's so weird that be like, like say, like in, in the Last Jedi, they have like a little thing where they show like, oh, like they like the this the movie ends with like, oh, the the little the little kid who's like hearing the stories about Luke Skywalker, and it's like, oh, he uses the Force to grab a broom, and like people made such a big deal out of that, being like, oh my God, what does this mean? It's like. It's a kid who can use like it's a kid who can use the force. That's been happening in this universe since the dawn of time. Literally any random per like the whole point is that literally any ran any single being in the universe can use the force. It's just do you believe in it enough and does the force both feel you're compatible with it? It is yeah, it's up to chance. It's not like this thing of like oh, only these specific people can do it. It's like anybody mm-hmm. can do it. It's like it's just the whole thing like I mean like say <laughs> it's uh, like, like my dude there's literally a charisma stat like there is a statistic that you can invest in that can make it so that life just gets easier for you so if you have if you have a robot that is not only believes in the he believes in the force and he has all the capabilities of somebody who could utilize the force in certain ways and is also and he's acting in because that's the thing it's like you also have to include like he's following like the father mission like you can't just like it, Toby has all the pieces is, is, is what I also like will concede on that that it can't just be any robot 
like Toby is checking all the boxes on the good boy list. Yeah, it's it's like say I don't see C three PO or even R two D two really utilizing the force in a certain way because it's like I feel like the force is ki- the force is kind of like <laughs> you you can kind of see it as like a weird twisted way of like Hogwarts houses of being like they need to have certain personality traits and like check certain boxes and they'd be like could this person use the force and be like yeah in this situation yeah they could or this person yeah or this person can't so it's like it's always like very like various different degrees but it's like again it's the Star Wars universe literally anything could happen in any situation, as long as you just write an answer about it. So it's like, yeah, they, they give an answer. It's almost they, like a college essay. Like, just give me your point and just back it up with a source or two. And honestly, you can make the most dog shit argument you want. Just back it up. Yeah, cite your Star Wars is visions is just cite your sources. The series. Yeah. And, and also like you mentioned, it has a really, it has a really nice and cute art style. Yes. It looks cute. It's like it. It feels very, like, even more so than the Tatooine Rhapsody one. It feels very Saturday morning cartoonish, but in a good way. Like, it, all of the, the tiny additional droids. I was so sad when, like, what, like, ten just got, like, massacred on the screen before my eyes. I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> like, those were friends. That was family right there. Um, I thought it was going to end up being that, like, they were all going to be, like, kind of force sensitive and they would just be, like, a little, like their own like little jedi council but like a, a sort of like faction like a little i don't know i i thought it was going to be cute I, I really thought they were going full like questioning on like what it means to be human there and be like no 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 these droids brought life back i thought it was going to be like their gift from the forest since they they were working so hard to like bring life to planet that the forest was gonna be like here you go this is for you guys oh oh, oh, oh for, for, for firstly for voices i mean there's only like three voices in this but uh, the um, me uh, professor they're Mitaka, all good yeah but professor mitaka is kyle chandler who is like it's like oh he, he's 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 one of those guys who's good in a lot of things so just seeing that it's like oh yeah just he, he's doing good again it's like yeah, yeah. and then toby i didn't reckon i don't know recognize who the guy yeah, the the kid if I, I assume it's it sounds like an actual kid playing toby but he's he's do he does a really good job dude oh mel i just want to say when he sees his dead dad master's Force Ghost, and how like he looks like Doctor White. It, it, yeah, I thought of so, Mega Man X. <laughs> it's so, it's so Mega Man X, and it also like I don't know if like you get you the kind of, I don't know if you noticed it at first, but like in the beginning, he has no arms. Like he has the machines doing all of the typing for him. Right, he is like, missing an arm. Force Ghost, his arms are back and like they're they're big and crossed. You're like that's kind of you're just you're just bragging about having, getting your arms back, <laughs> aren't you? But no, he is very Doctor Light Ryu getting he gives he gives well toby even Mega Man transforms when the robot attaches to his back like he like Mega Man five upgrades <laughs> yeah like it, it's it's wild i love it no like for f- intentional i can see what you mean like you can't tell where it's fully intentional but honestly let it bleed just just let it all be one big glorious reference i i give toby a Mega Man eight out of ten oh. I give it a Mega Man X one through four. <laughs> I give it a T zero dash B one out of ten. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to edit my score. Um, I would like to uh, revise it to a Battle Network out of six. There, there we go. Yeah. All right. Next is another studio trigger. Let's put that a pin in that. Uh, next one, and, uh, but that, uh, and next one we got is Lop and Ocho. Uh, this one was done by uh, Gino Studio, who is probably most known for doing Golden Kamui. And the director, oh, yeah. uh, the director Yuki Igarashi, uh, has done a whole bunch of different. That has been the episode director and animator on a whole bunch of different series, ranging from Azekin to Mob Psycho to a whole bunch of others. But the thing I most recognized him from, uh, like seeing his credits, was that he did the first opening of Jujutsu Kaisen, the Lost in Paradise one, which is one of my absolute favorite anime endings of all time. It, it's it's a completely different art style from this, so it doesn't really, like, it's not being like an, oh, yeah, I obviously knew that was him, but more so just being like, he, he does good, he did a really cool thing, so, and then we got, yeah, so. This is a pretty cool one. 
It again takes place during that episode three and four era. We have this like rabbit, this, this like rabbit girl uh, slave who is ba- who is basically saved from slavery by this by this like this old this old this old like family who basically adopt her in that essentially adopt her uh, to become part of their family. Then several years later, uh, the Galactic, which had already started like with their like grip on the planet basically starts consuming more and more of like taking control until their until like the little like the essentially the samurai uh, home is the only thing standing the daughter has essentially embraced the uh, essentially embraced uh, the whole like the the whole imperial uh, side because she believes like oh this is the way it should be this is like the right thing to do while the uh, while the, the their old man is very uh, is very like it's by, by the books very uh, traditionalist sticking with the old ways so they start feuding uh, the girl well, it's not uh, just the old ways it's the native ways yeah and then the girl the the, the rabbit girl lop is stuck in the middle she wants the family to come back together uh, her the, her sister Ocho leaves uh, she she's given uh, the thing that's handed down from uh, the family's uh, like family generation to generation which turned out to be of course a lightsaber. She gets the lightsaber. She ends up fight. She their uh, the father ends up getting blinded. She ends up fighting her sister. Her sister runs away, and it ends with her being all like, "I'm gonna save my sister," which is also a thing Aww. that uh, that is uh, that, that, that technically we already skipped it, but it's not the first time we're gonna hear something like that. Yeah, the four Star Wars tears families apart a lot of the time. It tears families apart, but it's never like, but it's never a thing of you should st- keep your family share about it. It's bring them together. It, it, it's it's uh, it's not their pro. It's not their problem. Uh, it, it's it which I, uh, it, it is a thing that I'm I'm very mixed on this. I'm it, it's mixed in both a good and bad way because I'm like on the one like I really love I really love the art style of this. Like I think the character like the character design of I think like you mentioned this is like they started this being all like we want to make a bunny girl. And then how, where do we go from here? Because like yeah, like Lop has a really like great and appealing design. I love like the the way the way the planet and like the uh, the uh, industrialist like set like setup that they have and like the different tiers that they that all of, like the the planet is like sectioned by. I think is really like well designed and cool. It has like a lot of great fight scene. It has great great action sequences in it. They they it has like a cool setup of being like oh yeah this family that's essentially fractured apart by the empire's like yeah total like domination grip it's just i think the 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 biggest thing that's holding it back is the fact that we don't actually really get to see like the family dynamics like we see the moment when lop is adopted into the family and then we cut to when shit is going down so we never get to see the moment in which the family gets like really torn apart and so we don't really when when we see when we get to the ending where it's like despite all the bad shit that Ocho did Lop still like I still want to save her from the dark side and have her come back to be our family it's all like I we haven't seen it's not like it's not like say like with I mean I mean Anakin and Obi-Wan we've see we see all that and even Anna and even like Obi-Wan's like oh no you're you it's like I'm sad but you're too far gone I can't save you while with here and it's like you got something like yeah where it's like you see you see how how far she goes and it's like oh she wants to still save her but we never really get to see oh why like why like what is it about their relationship that was so special that made that like made some make something as bad as this still want to be salvageable. And I think that that's the, and the fact that this ends again in a very like, Oh, it feels like it's setting up a continuation that like, Oh, that it kind of desperately needs. So it's like, yeah, it's the thing of like, I like a lot of things about this, but I feel like it's, it trips up on a couple things that like if with, with a cup, I, I, I think ultimately I feel like the issue is that it needed more time and it, they probably like, it probably would have needed like at least another 20 minutes. And I don't think they had the budget to do that. So it's like, yeah, they're just kind of, they had, they're stuck with their 20 minute time that they had to do and they did the best that they could with it. Yeah. I think this one probably, this one could have maybe been like, like a movie like a one-time shot thing type movie, maybe not like still in Star Wars, but you know, the same type of premise of like the local family, the encroaching empire slash invaders slash fill in the blank, bad guy armies. And then how the locals then react to that. Like, especially when they're on the, the back foot of that encroachment, like 
do you like with the dad hold true to the native roots hold true to that pride and like hold out and push back till the very last breath or do you try to find do you like he's like with the daughter accept the encroachment and then just find a way to work with with it what you believe is working within the system to get everyone at peace there but i mean it it gets kind of muddy with star wars because like the empire is intrinsically tied to the dark side right so like just even just an acknowledgement of their encroachment even just siding with them is just an accepting of that dark side it's just it's so it's a little weird uh because it seemed like less that the daughter was siding with the dark side and was just more trying to i don't know it it was definitely interesting them playing with that story structure that 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 the, with the plotline that they had there but also throwing the whole star wars elements into it i do love the art style of this one the aesthetic is super cool like the whole time i'm watching it, i'm like this looks almost kind of like like with where how they have the mix of like the steampunk pipes going through like the shacks uh in the whole tropical setting it was super nice uh the character clothing being very traditionally japanese as well as super cool um with with the different character models with the different species but i don't know like it it was just super weird how they threw the whole backstory of her bunny race being like for the whole first three minutes and then it doesn't really play into it all that much other than to have a kick-ass bunny girl with a lightsaber at the end which i mean anime has done bigger like backflips and spine breaks to to make weirder things appear on cameras so like have at it it works out she's well it's a great design there's an adorable droid that tries to remind everyone that they're a family until he gets smashed and it's heartbreaking um this one fully, I, I think, obviously takes, like, probably, like, the most liberties of tying, like, Jedi tradition into, like, samurai sword uh, tradition here where, like, how, like, a Jedi, in the, the family's history, a Jedi just appeared on this planet, taught one member of the family, and then that traditional pass is just kind of what allows that one lightsaber to stay within the family which is super cool but i assume takes like the most liberties on how like the whole inheritance of a lightsaber actually works so this one it seemed like it was more fully on just knowing the techniques than anything maybe force related because i don't think like did anyone actually even like do any force pushing shenanigans in this one like this was just exclusively lightsaber right yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think she does uh, any force things. Uh, mm. Yeah, she. It, it. I think at most there's just eye color changing, but I mean, woo. <laughs> right. It. It is. That's it just is. anime thing. Yeah. That. That yeah. I was gonna say. Let's just. That, we'll just throw that in the pile. Right. Um, I mean, like in in terms of it fitting like into the broader Star Wars universe, there is sort of that weird disconnect of like oh here's the lightsaber from hundreds of years ago it's being passed down like the jedi are very uh, like i it feels like the jedi are a myth and have been for centuries and now there's this empire when really there were jedi running around probably not that long ago you know um i don't know exactly when this is supposed to be between three and four but I mean, I you could probably chalk this up to space being very, very big, and like yeah. light takes light takes time to get to planets. So but they I go mean, faster than news light, can you know? news can take <laughs> less time. Like, right, but it, but it is true. I mean, it is... in, in this in, in apparently in this universe, I I recently learned that I guess space has fluid dynamics is how a lot of this gets explained away too, which is hilarious, but. Right. I'm at it. I'm at it. <laughs> right. So there was like you know, watching it, you know, just trying to enjoy it for itself. There was that weird like, how does this actually fit into Star Wars thing? Scratching the back of my head, um, where it it it's just those those weird little lore things about the lightsaber and the Jedi, and it's like it just it doesn't it doesn't quite it doesn't quite feel right, but if if it's just, if it's just oh it's it's a it's a fun thing it's it's not. It's not canon. It doesn't matter. Don't think about it. You know, just gotta let that go, I guess. Um, yeah, you know, rabbit, rabbit girl is cool. She is. Is she the same species as uh, as Jax? Is that is that the idea? Um, you know, J- Jax, Jax are 
the green rabbit from the Marvel. You lost me here, dude. Are you are you are you are you thinking of Jazz Jackrabbit? No, I am talking about. Are you thinking? Uh, are you thinking about? I'm talking about Jackson T. Tumparaki, who was also nicknamed Jax. He is a green rabbit in the Star Wars universe. Oh, uh huh. I, I, no? I had to look. No okay, idea. I, I, I had to look this him guy. up. I'd be this like, guy. okay, Here yeah, he okay. Is. So he, so he, he's a. Was he? The, what, what was it? Was from the original Marvel comics? Right. He was in. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm like looking at this and be seven like, through ten. Uh, George Lucas famously said, "I hate this guy. You are not allowed <laughs> to use him ever again." But <laughs> when Disney bought Star Wars, I guess there were people who were like, "Hey!" And so he's shown up in a lot of the uh, IDW Star Wars Adventure comics, which are meant to be canon. Huh. So he's been re-canonized uh and and i'm like so is she is she the same species yeah or or not or is she different okay does it matter okay she's yeah she is marked as a leppy a leppy yeah that's what and jackson is a leppy they're both the same species huh how about that i well think that's cool (laughs) see and here I thought, here I thought, lightsaber parasol was the only rabbit hole I was gonna go down today. I love on on the wiki, uh, it says uh, on on the wiki under yeah on because I did this is the first time I'm checking on the wiki under visions. It says ambiguous ca- canonicity, <laughs> which is like yeah fair, but it's funny yeah yeah like it, it does it feels very ambiguous and I think it's because you know it, oh it's it's doing it's it's an anime it's it's leaning more on on Japanese culture than just star wars as a concept so i i understand like it's those things that aren't quite gelling because star wars is not on earth star wars is is separate from earth culture even though it takes it from many places but a lot of these it's it's like oh this is very much rooted in japanese culture and that is one of the in japanese history and and this one you really feel it with the passing down of the lightsaber and and all that going on I think I think the big the I think the big thing I was thinking of being like oh yeah like like come look at the like Jackson has he has a very like yeah he has a very like alien rabbit like look while like Lop looks like a human like I mean it's funny that like, again like this is another trigger oh reference. no it's the orc rule yeah no, no you know it's a trigger ref for being like she, her design gives me very much like uh. BNA like they she looks she looks like a beast man from BNA like she looks like uh Michir- Michiru like she she has like a, she has a very Michiru face like she just like, she just instead she has very long rabbit ears instead of tanuki ears it is pretty similar and what what what, all, what yeah what also made me keep thinking of Michiru is that I was listening to her I I swore the entire time I was listening to her that it was Jeremy Lee who played Michiru in the BNA dub because it sounds like she's doing the exact the exact same kind of like tone and like inclination that Jeremy Lee normally does and how she did Michiru and then I was like oh it's her and it's like oh th- this series has a bunch of anime VAs so that, that, that probably makes sense and then I looked and then it's <laughs> only like, makes sense and then nope it's not her it's another it's another VA named uh, Anna Cathcart who I did not recognize from uh, anything so. So that was the thing. Like, I mean, that always happens to me. I'm really bad with VAs, so there are so many times when I'll be when I'm like, oh, like I rec- it's be like I see a VA, and I'm like, oh, I know, I know exactly who that is. That sounds so much like them. And then I look them up, and it's not them, and I get a supreme whiplash, and I'd be like, oh, I keep I keep doing this. Uh, and there, there was a, there was like a original, a regular VA that I, that I noticed in this, uh, that the, the Imperial, like the asshole Imperial officer that like, that like shows up, uh, several times in the episode is Cal McCarley, who's the, the, his, his inclination I recognized from the ReZero dub when he played, uh, when he played, uh, uh, the, the, the Sin Archbishop of Greed, cause like he had that very snarky, this, the exact same snarky, uh, look down upon, uh, a voice that he did for that. And he's also known for, well, was known for being the voice of Mob and Mob Psycho. That was some, that, that was something being like, oh, I, I forgot that I read when I was like doing my notes of being like, oh yeah, I forgot that he was in this. <laughs> That's funny to look back on. But yeah, and it it is it's ultimately the uh, it's ultimately a thing of 
of like he's like yeah like it ha- has a lot of cool things about it a lot of like good uh, execution but it is just a thing of like oh I'm like it's the one that it's the the episode that definitely needed the most time to be the most effective if 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 not yeah if not at least if not at least another episode probably I, I yeah I I think yeah I, I I think like a new another episode would like really benefit it but I think more than a new episode I think it just needed to be longer to really show the relationship between Lop and Ocho to show to have that and to have that like destroyed like relationship at the end be more impactful than it is uh like normally yeah I guess it, yeah it is one that that could serve from it being a little longer and indefinitely continued because it does feel uh, a little incomplete, which I, I think um, I feel like is also, like I said, it's, it's a case for a few of these. I think even the next one, I feel like, is is one that, oh, should have more or after, but we're not there yet. Uh, <laughs> we are. I, why, I, um, do you have any last minute thoughts? Uh, uh, does she have an action figure? They should They should make uh, Lop, I don't, does she an have it? I don't think they've made Visions action figures yet, but I, I'm no, expecting it, it to happen eventually. Yeah, let's uh, let's get some action figures. Feels like she could definitely be like a a plush. Everyone, okay, I, everyone okay, I like... lied. There there were a couple action figures of the one we're gonna get to at the obvious one that we're gonna get to at the end, but good. Okay, but yeah, okay. But yeah, <laughs> Lop, Lop, Lop deserves one. Lop, Lop deserves more. Yeah, let's uh let's let's give it to her. Well. What do you what do you think that scanner like was showing her? Like when her dad does the force like feng shui magic there she like pulls her scanner out and he's like you can verify this with your eyes and he's like what the f- was she just about to scan the force? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I mean that's that's all part of the discovery. What's the force's power level? That's all about trying to understand like I mean, you can say even the Jedi tried to do that with the midi chlorians, right? They were they were trying to apply science to something that is not entirely based in the science as we as we understand it. You know, that's why, like, I mean, see, the the midi chlorian. I would count accept does, that actually, right? So that, that that that's 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 part of like the theorizing when it comes to the prequels and the fall of the Jedi and their hubris. It was like, oh, we'll just do a blood test and see how much of a Jedi you can be, even though it's like, oh, okay, so Anakin had such a, a high midi chlorian count, but at the end of the day he was beaten by obi-wan kenobi who clearly had to have a less uh, amount so it's not like the amount of midichlorians in you it's it's what you allow yourself to sit and study and focus and like if the force is in all living things it's just like the midichlorians are sort of a a sign that you are more i guess naturally force sensitive but it doesn't even mean that you can be the best at the force because the force is an all-encompassing thing that is in every living thing. So you know, it's just the midichlorians are then just a moment of folly. Like you can you can communicate to the Force through the midichlorians. Like you know, the idea of oh, what, how Anakin was born in the first place with with Darth Darth Sidious and um, presumably Plagueis, and like oh, they might have accidentally caused. Uh, Anakin to come into being, trying to manipulate the the midichlorian. So there's there is a connection there, and it, that that God just the yeah. name Dark Plagueis just gives me are we the baddie vibes. Like, <laughs> why were you guys fall? His name is Darth Plagueis. Well, they're they're all like, bad, you know. Like, oh, you got I know Darth, that's just what you got makes Darth their Bane. Name. Like, it's, you've got it's Darth, Darth, uh, Darth Sidious. Darth Sidious. It's it's Ace Attorney. Darth tears, Tyrannus. Like, like Tyrannus. Like, Tyrannus is a good one. Uh, yeah, they're all like, "Oh, you're, you're, you're a rude person, aren't you?" And they're like, "Yeah, that's that's the whole point." We're rude. I mean, to be fair, is that any more trustworthy than Mace, Windu, Obi Wan, Kenobi? Like, these are just syllables. Like, these don't even mean anything. At least Darth Sidious means something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the the fuck is Obi Obi Wan gonna do for these you? Are, these are just a kid. These are just a kid and. These are just a kid names. These are th- these. You know what? Ken Penders actually owns the right to all Jedi names. Uh, I I give I give Lop and Ocho a bunny girl out of ten. Oh. A bunny girl out of senpai. A bunny girl out of senpai. There we go. <laughs> that works. Uh, 
one broken family out of five. One, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hippity hop down the bunny trail out of ten. Okay. All right, next we go to the technical final episode. Uh, like, not the final episode we're going to be talking about, but the final episode, technically, of Visions. Uh, Akakiri. This one was also this was also done by Science, Science Saru, who, as we mentioned, who also did the Toby short. Uh, and this one was directed by uh, Inyong uh, Choi, who is the president. I, I don't I haven't didn't recognize any project they worked on, but they are the president of Saru. So it is a thing of like being like, oh, we got the main guy who's in charge of the company to do this, probably because they ran out of people. And, and we're going to and, and we're this- going to see that again next. So. But yeah, uh, Akakiri, this one, I believe this one's kind of a bit more finicky of timeline wise, but I believe it's supposed to be sometime in the like either Old Republic or New Republic era, like basically before before like the end before like the sixth were supposedly extinct at the start of like the main Star Wars timeline where basically there there's this Jedi who's keeps who keeps getting visions of his loved one being killed and is basically trying to do everything he can to prevent that from happening. He like goes on this quest uh, with with his old love uh, who is this princess. Uh, they're basically going to track down uh, their their the aunt who is like this dark side this dark side wielding uh, woman who has taken over uh, her her country. They go through the journey. He ends up like go. He's, he's like still dealing with his like his demons and his visions. Uh, he ends up reaching her. She says that oh, if he embraces the dark side, he sh- she can basically save him. He refuses. In his haze, he ends up a- he ends up fulfilling the prophecy and accidentally kills her himself. So without anything else to do, she he accepts uh, her offer. Uh, she heals. She ends up heals, healing the woman, and then he ends up following along with her into the dark side, and that's how that's how Vision ends with with kind of like the appropriate Star Wars thing of the tragic oopsie daisy. Things aren't good actually. Wow. Way to way to just summarize the entirety of the third Star Wars movie so so quickly. Like it's basically just the plot of it, right? Well, I mean, yeah, the, the, that is like the most obvious thing about this short is that is is basically just, yeah, the Anakin storyline uh, again, only just kind of basically it's 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 essentially what, yeah, what what the Emperor was trying to do with Anakin of being like, oh, he's seeing that, oh, his, his the love, the lover is dying. Then you got the evil guy being like, oh, if you come to the dark side, we have immortality. We can heal you. They're like, nah, I don't want to do it. Accidentally kills the thing. Oops. OK, now I want to do it. But then, other of course, we see when Anakin gets to the whole thing too late, and while here, we see the guy actually going through with it, and it, it is a whole thing of, like, I feel like this is one that's, like, again, it has it has cool ideas in it, and it has, like, good things in it, but I think it's it's one that's kind of more, it feels more underbaked than a lot of the other, uh, than a lot of the other shorts of being, like, oh, you see all the ideas there, and a lot of the ideas are fully put through, but it's, like, there's something missing and it's hard to, at least for me, it's hard to really explain what exactly is missing about it. Uh, a reason uh, for the <laughs> thing to happen. Damn. No, well, <laughs> the, the whole idea of like, oh, he is like this person wants to turn him. I don't know who any of these names are. Okay. So Su, Subaki? Suba- Subaki is the main so, guy. Right. So Subaki is like, I'm a Jedi, and then you've got Masago, who's like, I'm a Sith. I want you, Subaki, to be my apprentice. And it's like, why? Who are you in relation to him? And you're trying to do it really weird. And then and then she's... So then she offers the deal, especially after he, he kills the, the girl he likes, and is like, okay, I'll be evil now. And then they just leave, and I'm like, "What? Why did? What is hap- Why did any of this actually happen? There, it, it's, it's be- missing." Better, better question. She she brings the she brings the girl back to life. She does like, bring him back. Slashes right. the princess. She so they have immortality. Well, so like then they were right all along. Right. So she she brings her back and is like, "Oh, you know, uh, maybe she wasn't." Maybe she was only mostly a dead, mostly dead, which means oh, you know. so it was a lie all along, gotcha. right? But still, it's like, oh, you did the thing, 
well, what if I just keep on fighting you? Or what if I turn on you? Like, there, there's... It's, it is that no, no, weird, no, no. like... You, you would still lie about it. No, 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 you would still lie. But, and honestly, that just makes more sense than that the dark side literally do actually have the ability to bring back the dead. Because then it's sort of like, well, then just bring the dead back. If most of you were just doing this to bring a loved one back slash keep yourselves alive forever, then just do it. Right. So I, don't I know guess we'll be... got to be a big old... I don't know. It just, it just, it just feels weird. I don't know what her real goal is, and she gets an apprentice, and they leave, and you're like, oh, what does that? Oh, it's over. Oh, this is all over. All of visions is over. I'm sorry. I feel like it's a really yeah, weird like, one to what... end on. I, because as a whole, I feel like maybe visions should have ended with, uh, maybe number seven even i feel like number seven would have been a, which which is the the second trigger one which we haven't talked about but yeah it just feels yeah, weird to end the anthology on this weird downer note even though it's like it's there's been highs there's been lows light and dark it just is like oh so here's this thing that really has nothing to do it like it really it just wants to be episode three but it's not but there's the the forbidden <laughs> love is this in the past i don't know there's a b-wing b-wings weren't invented until right before the original trilogy so is this the future i don't think it's the future oh it's just a thing oh it doesn't matter it's fine <laughs> <sighs> like does he keep having visions after like the visions of him murdering. I don't know. I mean, the, her hat. Like, why was he even having visions of that, anyways? The whole thing about like, Anakin and Padme and Palpatine is like Palpatine has been grooming Anakin for years to be his perfect apprentice. This just seems to be an angry person going, "Hey, I need an apprentice. I guess it's you. You've you've been thinking that you've been having dreams about killing the woman you're in love with, even though you're a Jedi and you're not meant to." Oh, you did it. Oh, I brought her back. But come with me anyway. And then, like, completely ignore her, even though you did this for her. But now you're gone with me, who's bad. Who am I? Who are you? Who are we? It's over. Kind of <laughs> kind of wild that this is the one short that focuses on visions in visions. That's this true. Also <laughs> one of the, this is also one of the weaker ones. It, yeah, and it's probably and it's not to say like one team be A team, one team be B team, but it was probably more just that like one with Toby being the project that was more dead set on like displaying the parallels and making references. This was probably more of the studio more in their like I don't know what the like the the jargon term would be, but like more for like their their in school, but like what they what they're usually used to like animating and displaying and that's probably why they had like like the president and the more senior probably had more of the senior of the senior staff working on this versus the other one probably had was able to have a bit more freedom there but you never know i don't know uh the art style on this one also was probably not my favorite it's not a bad one um it it, it could work it just i don't know everything seemed very square mm -hmm. Uh, everything kind of just looked like an episode of Avatar: The Last Airbender at times. It was just kind of weird, which is so so weird to say of like an actual animation from an actual Japanese studio to be like, yeah, I don't know. It kind of looks like a Nickelodeon cartoon trying <laughs> to be an anime. <laughs> Another thing related to uh, the whole notion of oh, bringing people back to life is is something I feel like Star Wars has been very. I mean, like. Which is funny is that a lot of this is kind of like it, 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 it's uh, uh, it, it's it's very finicky in regards to what exactly it's supposed to mean, because like I mean, because you have the whole thing in episode three, like when they bring the whole thing about like, oh, it's like, oh, the you can the way to bring people back to life is like said to be, oh, it's like it's Sith way. It's like, oh, like it, it, the whole not from a Jedi whole thing. And then you have the whole, the whole, the, the story of Darth Plagueis and the whole thing of like, Oh, he figured out a way to cheat death. So it's this thing of like, Oh, cheating death is a bad way. It is like cheating death is like, Oh, it's wrong. And then you have the Jedi's whole way of moving on from death is like, Oh, becoming like the force ghosts. And like their force ghost is their way of basically lingering on like spiritually rather, but letting themselves like move on. So you kind of have the, that, that's the whole thing of like Sith are basically trying to stay alive and Jedi are like, 
like able to move on when they know the time is right. So like you have the whole this notion of, oh, being using the power of the force to heal people is kind of seen as being like, oh, yeah, it's a very it's the it's a very Sith thing to do. And like, that's why that's what kind of tempts Anakin over to the Sith in the first place. And then you have, but then you have like the weird things of like, and then, then then it's done in this short. But then you have like the weird thing in Rise of Skywalker where they introduce this whole thing of oh, Ray like develops this ability of being like oh she is able to use the Force to heal to heal people, and she and then you have uh, you have a uh, uh, Kylo Ren ends up doing that at the end very end Kylo Ren you do does that to basically sacrifice himself to save her life. Which was done, which which we feels like it was done, which comes out of nowhere, because in the original draft of Rise of Skywalker, when it was Duel of the Fates, a big plot point was about Kylo Ren looking into the 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 searchings and discoveries of Darth Plagueis and discovering this force technique about bringing people back to life and like th- being able to heal and how after and then how th- that story was going to end with again Kylo Ren using this power to heal Rey and bring her back to life after she's killed but it's like the, in that in that version of the story it's kind of used in like a twisty way of oh he uses this he uses this evil power for good while, while when it's introduced here it's like oh, it's just another thing that the Force can do, which is also further complicated because in The Mandalorian, you find out that Grogu also has that power to use the Force to heal wounds and stuff like that. So it's like now this weird thing of like, okay, now Jedis can use the Force to heal stuff and things like that. So now it's I feel just... I feel like that's a lack of critical thinking in allowing that. I think that's someone not understanding the Force material. On on it, they they just see they just see healing on the surface level. It's like oh, it makes people less pain. That good. It's like no, not when the whole point is that that can escalate into immortality. My yeah, dude. yeah, like duel the like <laughs> the, that duel of fate script. I feel like did it the smart way because again, it's like it took this this the it, it, it again it's it took this evil effectively evil like move that he learned and essentially turned it back instead of using it to save himself he does it to essentially fit because because in that script he kills ray and then realizes shit i didn't want to do that and then brings her back to life so it's this whole thing of oh yeah it's it's him kind of basically he's writing a wrong because oh he's saving her and then killing himself and it's like oh she doesn't have that power so it's like oh everything kind of like goes back to the way it's supposed to be and that's like oh so just having and i i, I think the idea of having the good having I mean, I mean, the, the, ultimately, the story is supposed to be of like, oh, the Jedi aren't exactly correct in everything. So being able to use like, quote unquote, like non non uh, conventional like approaches like that healing power is like, I think could be used in a correct way. And I think the way they used it, way they had Grogo use it uh in the Mandalorian by having him like, oh, healing a scratch thing and how that power is what kind of like leads uh Carl Weathers uh, character to kind of turn around being like, okay, I was going to betray you, but now I see us and I'm like, holy shit, this guy is actually the real deal. Okay, let me help you. And being like, it's just the way they handle it of being like in this grander scope is like, oh, you, you, you need to like put a little like a harder, a harder tooth pin in that and being all like, oh, examine what exactly it means and what you can actually get out of the narrative for that other than just a magical regeneration ability. <laughs> Yeah, and then oh, uh, there, there, the the short does have uh, the 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 two the two funny guys that like kind of accompany them on the journey. I like them. It's like oh, they're 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 fun. One of them's George Takei. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> they're neat. They 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 do add a uh, some some needed levity and a otherwise. This one had a lot of characters yeah. in it for uh, for how I don't know. It's kind of it's more action dense. Again, a lot of good fight choreography in this one as well too. Um, it, it's it's another very western feeling because you have like the whole the whole journey thing of being like oh we got we got to get through the danger we got to get through the dangerous desert that's like oh that like is normally that's normally impassable. But it's like yeah. oh but, but 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 with these guys but with these guys as your guide and we got to pay them in advance and all like it's a lot of that like that stuff that you see in yeah classic westerns. So they do that, and then the the very the end, like the whole. I mean, the whole temple that that, that the. Well, I wouldn't say if it's. I don't even know if that'd be considered a temple. Just the the place that they go to has that very like that that samurai uh, uh, aesthetic too. 
And then, and then, like, like you mentioned, trying to figure out who uh, the ant looks like. It's like I said, like, it kind of get like not exactly, but kind of gives me a little bit of the old woman in Spirited Away vibes of just like just the a big woman. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I don't know. I was getting. I don't know. I, I couldn't figure it out. It's like, like the. I mean, there's like that. The this the like there's like the big mom in One Piece. I guess you could kind of say is a similar thing. I'd be like, you just have like just that. Are you sure. <laughs> Wouldn't it be the first time One Piece just perforated my brain and affected my mood? I, I mean, it's just, I mean, that is just a, uh, that is just another stereotype of just the big grandmother or aunt, uh, like thing that's just kind of like a stand in for a, uh, like stand in for, uh, like, uh, overwhelming power of just being, of, a, yeah. of, 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 of slothful power, I should say. That's the correct. <laughs> but this one can just bring people back from the dead like it's still just fucking what like no strings attached she didn't like monkeys paw her back like as a zombie or as a, like she just brought her back <laughs> it's like what and i guess the monkey's paw is now nah, you gotta be my it's it's the no holds barred thing of like okay were well, you gonna be my slave right yes are you sure are you sure you're gonna be my slave yes okay i'm gonna do it after she does it all right you're still my slave right yes Okay, we're good. <laughs> He's just. Yeah, no, I, I'm a slave. It's great. The man of I'd, honor. I'd, I'd, yeah. Okay. Honestly, I'd, it, it, I'd rather it just be that like she knew that she wasn't really dead. She was just like inches from death, and that thus she made the deal and double checked to make sure about the deal. But she's and like, just oh, you're not like, really dead, are you? Because if you are, I can't bring your. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. You're almost dead. Very close to dead. Because <laughs> it. Because, again, if you can have a clone army, why not have an undead army if you can just bring them back? An, un- an undead army, I mean, that, that was in uh, Death Troopers, the the now Legends novel. Uh, and Red Harvest oh. being a prequel, I think that takes place. Oh, God, is that like the Marvel zombies of Star Yeah, Wars? Death Troopers <laughs> is about Han and Chewie stumbling across a bunch of zombie uh, stormtroopers. <laughs> and they're like, oh, uh. and it... it, it I mean, it's like, Ugh. here's an explanation as to why they're zombies, but it's zombies. Um, it's just zombies. It's just, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's still Umbrella Corporation. Right. And yeah, I I don't know. I guess um, the thing with the Sith that are like, they're seeking immortality. It always feels like a very selfish thing. Not a, I'm never going to help anyone. I'm going to help myself and the ones that... I care about. Well, that's that's what immortality is. Even if it's for another person, that's still for selfish reasons. Yeah, but I guess she does. She does. She does end up helping, and it, and then they they go peace and bye. Like I think Palpatine was banking on the fact that Padme was going to die. Um, Cause, yeah, well, because well, I thought that was like part of like the dark side's whole gimmick is that it's an unfulfillable promise that their fault that like that part of it is the fact that like there's a con involved in getting people onto the dark side versus like the Jedi using, have, having a lot of their techniques involve faith, right? Like that's what it's like. One side is functioning on deception and another on faith. Right. I'll, um, I mean, but it is funny because sometimes in like, especially the classic trilogy, you hit a point where it's like, Oh, the dark side, um, they're not, or I guess even in the prequels, sometimes like the the most dark side person is the one who who ends up telling the truth, and then you have the Jedi who kind of like <laughs> aren't like the 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 fact that oh uh, trying to sugarcoat it and shit. Yeah, it it, it 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 it's it's a it's a weird there's a weird dichotomy there. There's a little bit of of gray hiding in that, but I mean the dark side is still they don't look so good after a while. They they look. They don't look good. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I feel like that should just be enough to yeah, go. This, the, the point of this podcast is not to humanize the dark side, folks. I know. It's just, <laughs> I just, I'm just. You know, they got. It's th- just in some of these, there, there's, there's almost like, there's some things that are exclusively like tied to the dark side, and then there's like things that are just like associated with the dark. Side. So I'm just like still trying to figure out on like what is truly like that's part of it and that's just happens to be everyone just isn't mm-hmm. on the same team I feel, as that I feel like there, there, there are there there might be a couple stories here and there but uh, i've never seen them but i think it's for that in all of the star Wars, it's always the dark side is never given like 
a great like the dark side is always bad it's only the light side is always never like the light side isn't always good it's all like there it's a lot of grays in a lot of time but the dark side is never really given grays it's always just it's bad no matter it's basically yeah. like the worst it's you you can have you can have it's not like oh like oh the light side the light side isn't that good but oh here's some good from the dark side it's like no the dark side is always considered bad it's just oh the lights it's always just the oh the light side isn't better it, it, in some in some cases the light side isn't significantly better than us which is like it's just it, at that point it just it just becomes very centrist uh uh lines of thinking yeah, of being I, like I, oh we're the worst but it's like oh but you guys do some things bad so that makes you just as bad as us i had a question about the nature of the light side and the dark side but i believe it'll be more appropriate for later when we discuss another character and but he, we're just, we'll okay. get to that. Uh, do we have any last minute things to say about Akakiri? Uh, uh, give it a resurrection just... out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I give uh. it a kill out of 10. I don't got a score for this one. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> give, it an eh. give it an eh out of eh. An eh. This was <laughs> meh. An eh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, uh, I, I don't know how long the video is going to be at this point, but three hours into this uh, star into this trigger podcast, let's talk about some trigger. Oh God! Ooh, all right, time all for right. The episode to start, guys. Okay, chapter one. So, the fight first. The first of the trig to two trigger. Uh, well, first off, it is pretty cool that of all the ones to get, we got Sai and Saru got two episodes, but also Studio Trigger got two episodes, which does make me say that they're like, yeah, Studio Trigger is the one, like, Studio Trigger is the good guy. They're, they're the guys we want to give, we want to give them to. We want to, we want, we want to give them a lot of Star Wars stuff. And Stop. the first one we're talking about is The Twins, directed by none other than Hiroyuki Imaishi. Yes. M- Mr. Gurren Logan, Kill a Kill, Promare himself got to do in the middle while he was working on cyberpunk said, I'm going to go make a star war and then made a star war. And he made a Hiroyuki. It, the, this is by maybe it's because again, he is the most well-known director of all the guys that have worked on this, but this definitely felt the most auteur of any of these star war lays. Like it, it's very much a case of you could have had this guy direct a full star Wars movie and, people would have liked it because it's like, yeah, this is Hiroyuki Amayushi just going full, <laughs> full, I was full kill a kill, full pro mare, just doing all of his sensibilities, but in a star Wars, uh, painting in in a star Wars, like mask. And it is, it, it's very biased just because of all my trigger love, but it's like this, this was my favorite because it hit all of the beats that I just love from him and did it in that Star Wars mold that I love. And it's also the fact that this one in particular take in a unique in a unique turn of events after so many stories have been very weary about touching the sequel trilogy again. This one takes place sometime after the events of episode 9 where you got the remnants of the first order and the 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 Sith that were on uh the Exegol planet and they basically Reta- they basically created like uh, those like the, the the star death destroyers combined them together and basically created their own new uh, death star that's uh, like that's also a that's also a star destroyer and at the same time they've also created these two uh, force wielding twins uh, that that they named Karen Am that they that they're essentially basically use going to be using as their as their new like Darth darts so to speak to uh, rule the galaxy as they prepare to destroy a bunch of planets. But on their day of planning, suddenly the brother uh, turns the, the sun, suddenly the brother steals uh, the steals the kyber crystal that they're going to use to power the device and goes rogue because he received a vision that his sister was going to die. His sister, who is full on the uh, First Order side, is ends up basically fighting them. They do this like, big battle, and then it ends with uh, the brother destroying the Star Destroyer and everything, and then residing to, just like I mentioned with La Pinocho, save his sister somehow. That's right, a cliffhanger. And all without a giant robot. Or a drill. 
disappointing. Huh. Well, I mean, the, 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 <laughs> the ship look, I mean, the ship itself, is, even though it is a, st- a literal Star Wars design, you can also see it being like, yeah, you can see, you could put this in a trigger project and it would fit like just as well. Well, that's just because trigger is always doing references <laughs> anyways. So it's like. Sure. Okay, we haven't me- I haven't mentioned it, but there's of course the elephant in the room, the the elephant in the room of of uh Kare himself. Or should we or we should say Leo because he's not slick cuz Imaishi is slick. He went, "I got like a we- Star <laughs> Wars. I'm going to put my OC in it." And not even like there's slight differences. If if you put them together, you can tell the difference, but if you took both characters separately, you're like yeah, you would just see, yeah, that, that's Leo. Wrong. If anything, it's kind of like the whole uh, Star Wars samurai thing where it's like, if anything, it just reveals that Leo Fotio is just Anna, is just Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And so by doing anime Luke Skywalker, they ended up just doing Leo Fotio again. So it's like, oh, all you did was just complete the circle. <laughs> He, uh, I mean, yeah, Luke. Luke I, is a twink. I mean, yeah, I guess you could say I, episode four Luke <laughs> would be a twink, definitely. So, it fits into we got Leo uh, twink, and then we got uh, this guy twink. Yeah, I think it's because uh, that already got tired of everyone doing the comparisons of Gallo to, to uh, com- yeah, Kamiya, to Kamiya. Yeah, so, like, so we got someone else. It was like fine. <laughs> it's like now Leo gets to be everywhere. <laughs> Which I ain't complaining. It fits. It works great. It's, and then the fact that you get to you get gender bender Leo, which even weirder for the people who couldn't figure out that Leo was a dude in the first place, anyways. Just give so, her long hair. Yeah, it, it's Leo with long hair. It's, there you go. Now it's a girl. There you go. That's all you needed there. Yeah. But I do love the continuation of like the association of the Force and twins. Again, since the Force itself is a twin, it has a light and a dark side. And so, you know, twins just being kind of, like, associated with it, I think is super cool. So the fact that uh, the Empire is trying to, you know, do their own artificial, like, Force manipulation by just breeding themselves some, like, super twins, I think that's super... I, I Like, Trigger Trigger knows what they're doing. That is definitely some shenanigans as bullshit that would be... That would start showing up in the 10th episode of a 12-episode series, so... I love it. And, and, um, and, 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 it is, and it is piggybacking off of a very eh plot point in Rise of Skywalker and being like, oh, hey, let, let's 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 try taking this eh plot point and like do something like make something out of it. Being like, yeah, like the whole thing about the about about, about the uh, the Sith, the Sith alchemy and the cloning and like creating creating these like I said, yeah, force sensitive people out of. Thin, yeah, basically doing like, yeah, basically doing like the the long and short, the act like the accidental creation of Anakin, and now doing it for real, and like, yeah, you seeing like seeing being like, oh yeah, you you kill the Emperor, it's like, oh like these guys aren't gonna go away, they're still gonna they're still gonna keep uh, coming back and trying to do some shit, and like how they and they and they found like another funny way to be like, okay, now we're gonna try to do Death Star, we're kind of now we're gonna try doing a mobile Death Star, <laughs> like a portable Death Star that we can carry along with us. And like it was super weird too, because like even with there being so many uh, kyber crystals in all the different parts, I did not expect there to be so much kyber crystal involvement in this <laughs> short, though. I, but yeah, no, this one goes just as him on how important. Like they're literally just as important as the lightsaber themselves. Like in in the movies, the lightsaber is what's important. In this, man, the crystal is literally just as important as the lightsaber. Well, I mean, because it was it was revealed later like oh the death star was powered by the or the laser was powered by the kyber kyber blah, 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 the kyber crystal i mean that's what rogue one well i mean they kind of talk do they even mention i mean they mention kyber in rogue one no um, they, they don't mention kyber crystals in rogue one yeah well they doesn't doesn't the one guy have a necklace that has kyber so like he talks about kyber but i guess maybe they don't specifically say it's a kyber crystal in the death star that's more in rebels and was hinted at well it was meant to be hidden at hinted at in clone wars like the the kyber there's the the four part episode that they released like the animatics of the one that they didn't finish that was like which is like super important and maybe they should have finished it because it does other stuff but like that's the first oh chunk of kyber crystal why why do the separatists want it spoilers death star and then you do you get some of that in rebels um what wait what were you gonna ask laura what question oh yeah. it, it was sort of like a, going back to what toby 
Um, and about how, like, Jedis have to seek out a kyber crystal, right? So, mm-hmm. like, say someone is just shit out of luck. They are super in tune with the Force, but they are born on the worst rock in the galaxy that has no kyber crystals on it. Mm-hmm. Does the Force then bend over and just find a way to attract a crystal to that individual? And if that's the case, are people then just predetermined to be Jedi's then? Um, like if, but like, are kyber crystals a naturally occurring element? If that's the case, are there some planets that have more than others? And if that's the case, then are there people that have a greater likelihood of being a Jedi of another just by through their proximity of crystals? The um. Yeah, like like kyber crystals ca- are are naturally occurring. They they can be in many different places. Like when we get to the the prequels, and it's like, oh, the Jedi have been a, the guardians of the universe for a thousand generations. At that point, it is, hey, we know, like we can we can pretty much sense who can be a Jedi. You know, within the 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 you know the core and and the mid t- or the middle whatever the mid. I forget what they're called, because uh, uh, Anakin just misses it because he's he's born on the outer rim. He's off on the like the very edge of the known galaxy, so he yeah. uh, is kind of uh, he he flies under the radar. But but the idea is, oh, the Jedi are aware of when force sensitive children are being born, and like there's even a list that they they start a. Uh, you know, putting together so that when they go and say, "Oh, uh, can we have, can we have this kid?" <laughs> we're can here we, for your child. We're here for your child. So it's like, oh, if you don't let us take the kid, this kid will never learn to be a Jedi. And and so the 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 finding of the Kyber crystal in in the Jedi Order is sort of a coming of age thing. But they're all taken to a planet that is mostly Kyber, like it is the one planet that has the most kyber at uh. all. So they go there to do their personal trials and find the small shard that's going to be in their lightsaber. But there are other planets that's that color have locked. kyber. Uh, technically, like this wasn't explained in the movie, but that planet is what Starkiller Base is uh, in Episode Seven. It's supposed to be that sacred Jedi planet full of kyber that's been transformed into... A super big Death Star that everyone's okay with just blowing up. Who cares about like its importance? <laughs> um, I think uh... that's because they wrote it, and then later someone went, "Hey, can we connect these two things?" That's basically what happened. Oops. Right, but but um, yeah. So I mean, it is possible that like, oh, if you were, I mean, the Force does work in mysterious ways. So it could even be like a person is attracted to a planet. Uh, because of the force and someone who is force sensitive someone who is looking to you know follow in the ways of the jedi even if they're not specifically a jedi because there are there are other groups who believe in the it, force. it would manifest yeah it would it, it would it would manifest in steps mm-hmm. okay it, it would be in steps. so to, to, it, it just furthers back to that toby literally just believed hard enough for a kyber crystal to literally just be inside him Right, and I guess if he was always powered uh, by a I mean, kyber crystal, because hey, his 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 dad was a Jedi at one point, it makes sense that he might have. Some. He was basically being raised as one his whole life, like yeah, whether it was through the formal or informal, due to his creator being a Jedi. I like Toby was being was born and raised Jedi. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that yeah. Okay. Right. So this. Uh, this one, it, it, it definitely looks pretty and dynamic and wild and crazy. (laughs) And I didn't understand a thing. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Hi, welcome to the studio trigger. This is the podcast. Cause it's like at one point, like what, what ends up happening is that fake Luke Skywalker is fighting with (laughs) fake evil Leia Leia. and they're just standing on the star destroyer in space the how is he not dead <laughs> jimmy neutron logics they're screaming <laughs> about their feelings they're saying people are clothing and clothing are people that's not how star like here's in the heavens i mean even <laughs> though like star wars i guess there's sound in space there's they 
if you're Don't in space, you die. Like, you, you can't just stand and breathe space. They, 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 and, but they're like doing crazy force things and groaning and screaming and shooting lightning. And it's like, oh, wow, it, it, something's definitely happening. But I don't know what, and I don't know how they're alive, and what? What? It? It's such a weird. It didn't even occur to me that this is supposed to take place after Rise of Skywalker. I was just like, is this just like a complete retelling of the Luke and Leia dynamic? And because it is like also a Death Star, and and all the, like it. It's just, it's it's all about uh, visuals and, and and illusions and and screaming. And I, I'm like, man, could you imagine if we had David here for the yeah. rest of this podcast? This would have just been his critique of all the other. <laughs> anyways. If anything, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad for this, for this POV because it's like, yeah, someone who has no idea about what trigger is basically being introduced through trigger through basic, basically, yeah, yeah. Ba- basically a subdued, like a, this is a subdued version of trigger and being like, what the hell's going on? And being like, oh, this is a sub. Dude, yeah, no, know. this is Imaishi respecting Star Wars. This is him. This is him like showing respect to the source material and be like, I'm just going to do my little twist on it. I'm not going to do anything crazy. Nothing. There's no giant robot. Right. It's just, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense to me in terms of Star Wars. Like, <laughs> like, oh yeah, there's twins and I guess there's a light in the dark side, but why would, why, why would, okay, so there's supposed to be dark acolytes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it, it, so, it, it's a, sen- yeah, it's essentially just, like, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, like, yeah, they're, they're either weird, like, evil, yeah, they're, they're essentially weird, like, evil force twins that have, like, oh, that they're, they're, that they're assigned to do, that they're, all they know in their life is to do, uh, like, yeah, to, to follow, to follow the dark side and to do what the dark side commands them. But then you have, like, the, the whole thing of, like, the guy, the guy's like, oh, shit, my, my, my sister's gonna die. I don't want that to happen. Let me stop this. And then it leads to the whole fighting the battle. And it's like, yeah, because she, well, he, cause he, he, his whole thing of being like, Oh, I actually care about you. I don't want us to die. Like, there's the whole thing of like, where she's like, Oh, are you going to go turn to the new Republic now or something like that? But then he's like, he's like, no, I don't care about that. I just don't want you to die. So it's like, I think, I think it is a cool thing. Of like, oh, the he, yeah, cares kind of like the closest thing to like, yeah, again, kind of in a similar vein to Ronan of like, Oh, he's not, he's not like actually a good guy. It's just the whole thing of like, I just don't, yeah, he, he's not a good guy, but he, he's just anti the bad guys. So I kind of like that, like the, that, that fun, like spin on it of being like, oh yeah, all, uh-huh. all I care about is you, but like, she's all I care about is the dark side. And so you get these, the, like their, their fighting ideologies kind of exploding in like the really crazy action sequence that's going on. And then that, that basically just kind of like implode, like you, they, there is like, and you, they, they're, they're able to pack a lot of, they're, they're able to pack a lot of what I think. I mean, not subtle, like particularly, but a lot of, a lot of like a uh, quick and quick and easy, like characterization of the two of being like, yeah, like there, there's uh-huh. the moment where like the girls, like the sister starts to like feel pain. And as she kind of has that realization moment of, oh yeah, putting my all into the dark side means that, oh yeah, maybe I actually am going to die. Oh no. And like, she starts to feel like, oh, do I actually want this? But then eventually and it's deciding that, no, I'm, I'm, I'm too far gone. I'm going to go full in investing myself into fulfilling my destiny in the dark side while the brother is all going all like, no, we can, we like, we're people, we can decide our own destiny. So, <clears throat> Oh, Imaishi. Yeah. The, the very twisted Luke and Leia relationship. It's like, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's again, it's what, it's what Imaishi and Trigger do so well is that they can make something so obvious and blatant, but yet still find ways to have subtlety thrown into it. Uh, being all like, yeah, like Kill a Kill has like very blatant, like theme has very like blatant, like imagery and obvious notions of this is what the plot is. This is what they're trying to say, but then have subtle things of being like, let's look at, look at the, look at these like characters actions and like, what are they like symbolizing and like how this leads into this and leads into that. It's like all these, it's all these like little intricate things of like mixing the loud and bombastic with like, Oh, like there's <laughs> actually like the, the, of smart writing. And I think that, yeah, like the, I think this is like, yeah, it's, it's a very simple like story, but it's like by doing it to a 110% degree, I think it like just makes it, makes it fun to watch and being all like, oh yeah, like I'm, I feel like I'm getting something out of it, even if, yeah, if somebody, but that's also, again, as a Trigger fan and someone not as a Trigger fan would be all like, okay, this is maybe a bit too wacky for me. (laughs) Man, maybe that's someone else's podcast, not this one. I can love this short. The droid has a helmet on. (laughs) 
Right, because it's like, oh, they're in, they're in space, and he's like, I don't want you to die, so instead I'm just going to have a really tall lightsaber cut through you, and I'm going to fly away, and you're going to be drifting in space. It's lucky that a robot <laughs> no, who that... has a helmet, because he's in space, will save you, even though you should have died like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, I just I it's so it's so over the top and so weird and so crazy and I'm just like I not sure what happened and it feels like a really weird well I mean it, there's it feels like elements of of episode four like a weird remake of Star Wars but including that last Jedi shot of the Star Destroyer breaking yes. in half I was gonna I was gonna say that was also the thing of being all like hi mm-hmm. hey 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 people who still mad about the last Jedi do you know who likes the last Jedi Studio Trigger <laughs> damn <laughs> validation yeah just see, seeing seeing them doing the Holdo remove the the Holdo man- maneuver of being all like yeah it's 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 still cool it's I, I still uh, I just seeing a light speed just destroying a, a, a giant star star destroyer it's like yep yeah, i still love it it still looks cool mm-hmm. and and then and then you have like the whole ending thing of like oh he ends up on tatooine which is like of course everybody keeps ending up on tatooine but if you have the thing of like oh <laughs> it, it's the twin mm-hmm. it's a special fucking rock in the middle of the nowhere twins get it the twins the the twin sons get it Twins. Uh, uh, twi- uh, so many twins. Yeah. Oh, maybe maybe he'll find Leia's lightsaber. Yeah, no, that's what I, I was thinking. Right. He's he's gonna find the lightsaber that that Ray buried, and that's like that 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 that's that's how the next uh, that that that's how the sequel's gonna be. Is that he's gonna find he's gonna find the lightsaber that Ray buried, and then yeah, that's, she and sure then, yeah sure buried a lightsaber in Tatooine. Great idea. Oh jeez. <laughs> okay. Um, I feel this is also another short that kind of would have benefited from a bit more time, kind of for the same reason as Lop and Ocho, in that, like, we only see the brother, like, post, uh, like, side change or whatever. Like, we never see him be in line with his sister. You never see the twins be twins. Like, we only ever see them completely at odds with each other. And I know, again, time constraint, budget constraint, all those, but kind of like with Lop and Ocho, how we kind of should have, we needed more scenes of the family either being together to kind of see how they're apart mm-hmm. kind of needed to see a bit of like the twins because otherwise it's it's literally just these two twins that are just grouchy at each other like the sister just comes off as like completely unhinged and i know like towards the end that's the point like it, it, it gives you kind of like azula vibes there but like really they're just arguing the whole time and you're like what the would you just leave bro just just get out of there <laughs> like you're already ruined their plans i, I think the di- i think the difference why it doesn't bother me as much as la pinocho is because like these two characters are kind of set up in a very unconventional way of like yeah these guys they're basically experiment freaks of like oh yeah like they're created from the, yeah they're not people yeah, created from the force so right. just kind of getting the like you kind of get the notion that before the story starts there were both very much blank slates of like I'm following my orders to obey the the dark side and destroy everything and then you get like the moment the vision happens for Car then it's like oh now he becomes a person so it's like we're seeing the moment where these two actually become characters rather than where Lopinocho's whole thing Thing is about like oh the relationship goes downhill like this is more so about the two don't really have a relationship it's more so about being like it's kind of like it's about card developing empathy and uh him wanting am to also develop empathy while she's like just going yeah. full like she's developing a personality but it's just full apathy and uh yeah rage and uh, chaos so it's like again i think i think the underdeveloped relationship works in in this context because it is done in such a way of being like yeah these guys are very much not like real people with a real relationship so the way it's like handled this way it's like yeah it, it is a screwed up like thing of like a oh, see and then seeing how like they're fighting kind of going becoming like uh like grander and like on a grand on a far grander scope than maybe even star Wars is supposed to be just kind of emphasizes how different these two characters really are. And also in terms of, yeah. uh, well, and, and, uh, other side thing is like, I was happy seeing like the, the robot that, uh, that uh, Am uh, talks to a lot uh, is it's not exactly him, but he, he's basically like this version's ver this this uh, series version of Triple Zero from the comics, who is basically who's just a black C three PO only he's a psychopath. 
So just seeing like evil C-3PO in this uh, as someone who absolutely loves Triple Zero and is one of my favorite Star Wars characters, just seeing a version of him here just makes me be like, oh, I like this. I'm glad I'm glad someone like him is here. <laughs> they like how the, the twins had their own version of a C-3PO and a version of an R2-D2. It just makes sense. It, 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 it's like um, how when Mr. Lucas said, it's like poetry. It rhymes. It does rhyme. In terms of VAs, uh, <laughs> the main guy is Neil Patrick Harris, which I, I thought is kind of, again, like Joseph Gordon-Levitt uh, in that one. Wow, way to just hire a twink to voice a twink, <laughs> dude. Like, original, <laughs> real original, guys. But his voice sounds very weird. It's like, I, I don't know, there's something off, there's something slightly off about it. Uh, I checked out, yeah, because I checked it out in Japanese, and the Japanese, I I, I actually prefer the the Japanese VA of the main guy because it's uh, it's a it's a Jun, Junya Inoki who I, I most recognize as being uh Yuji and Jujutsu Kaisen, and who you might recognize as uh as Yomogi in uh, Dinazenon. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so it's like uh, I th- I think yeah he he handles that the char- that kind of character much better than. I think Neil Patrick Harris uh, did. I mean, there is a lot of anime screaming in in. in... But but Am's voice I- in English is Allison Brie, which I did not. Which yeah. is she's doing a completely different like tone of voice than she normally does, and I think I think she knocks it out of the park. Like I love the kind of like angry growl and scream that she does. Because I'm so used to her being like her like I'm so used to her being uh, uh Annie on Community of just being her happy like uh, chipper voice. So seeing her go full like psycho killer is being like oh this is fun. I'm like I like seeing like the, this is like probably like this of the notable before she's probably the standout performance of all of like the dubs uh in 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 this entire uh series i would say because of how fun uh that performance is i agree on that one it is as she's she's fucking off the rails on in this a lot of screaming a lot of wildness a lot of a lot of things dude it <laughs> you think like she's at her end and then the, the robo arms come out and you're like oh well yeah and i was like like for me like i had to like facepalm myself because like i thought we were at our peak it's like what the fuck was i watching like this was the trigger one like it was because it's because they put it in the middle so you have all these other anime things and you like you expect the anime highs and lows and then you're like but you guys didn't expect triggers highs you didn't expect that they're not co- no so once the robo arms come, i was like ah here we go. Fight has started. Yeah, I was honestly thinking like, yeah, like, like, like the, the 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 twins could have been like a good like series ender. Like, like this is how you end visions. Like that as that as the final episode because it's of how because bom- it, it is the most bombastic of all of them. Like, and it feels like a climax. And like, yeah, we you have the ninth Jedi, which takes place far in the future, but it's like so far. It, it's like it's hard to really understand. While this one, it's after like St- Studio Trigger basically made episode the closest thing to episode ten. We at the moment, like, because I don't think they've made anything post episode nine currently in like a timeline, like in any piece of media. So this is the closest thing to episode ten we got. So all I'm saying yeah, is, hey, mm-hmm. if if you if you want to make episode ten, just ask Imaishi. He'll gladly do it. Right. There, there Giant is... robot for episode ten. Which they even. Uh, th- this was actually very, very recent at uh, at a convention uh, when they were talking about uh, like just trigger stuff. They had mentioned uh, they, had, they 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 want to do more uh, vision stuff. Uh, one of them is to do a part two of the twins. So they do have they have an idea of how to do a sequel for this. Ooh, and they said their yeah. other I- the other idea that they want to do for original Star Wars is. Jar Jar Binks accidentally stumbles into an Imperial uh, fortress and they think that he's a Sith Lord. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just uh, do it in the uh, Inferno Cop style and <laughs> just to go. <laughs> just to I cut, have full faith. I, I have full faith in him. Just give it to me in Inferno Cop style and you're good to go. <laughs> it's, it's just cutouts the whole time. I don't know what that is. <laughs> well... Uh, David, if you go onto your local, I, I don't, I don't want to show David Inferno Cop. He'll just implode on himself. <laughs> oh no! I was literally just gonna link him to our episode of Pulling the Trigger. That's right. There's a lot. Uh, do, do, do we have Do we have anything else to want to say about the twins in particular? Oh, is it usual for lightsabers to wrap around other lightsabers? Because I thought that part was kind of like wild. They're, they're usually pretty solid. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I think they de- they definitely went we we have a style we're doing style it doesn't matter 
if this makes sense in terms of how the physics of Star Wars works. I mean, to be fair, they it could be more interpreted that they were uh, lightsaber whips, maybe. Yeah, are there lights? I get. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember if there are actually lightsaber. I think whips. I saw it on the list when I was going through the whole lightsaber parasol. Yeah, parasol th- like breakdown there. There, there is something. Light, lightsabers can come in many forms and fashions. You can have tiny ones. You can have big ones. You can have ones that Kylo Ren has for some reason with the little bits. And then you have uh, anime ones. (laughs) Like physics be damned. (laughs) Right. Like I saw on the list that there was a lightsaber blaster. And I was like, so is it just like a blaster that shoots a bunch of little lightsabers? And I was like, oh, no, no, wait. It's a a blaster with a lightsaber attached to it. It's like, oh. Yeah. So uh, Ezra, when he starts training, he... He's like, oh, this is my blaster, and it has, I can push the button to be jump. Comes a lightsaber. Uh, and eventually, he just builds a regular lightsaber. That that hybrid one breaks. But, uh, yeah, you know, because in that show, it sort of starts off more, more kid-friendly. Uh, people only getting, you know, stunned. By the end of the show, uh, people are dying. There's death. Oh, no. People have died. It's, <laughs> uh... By the end of the show, Shinji's crying. Asuka gets kicked off the team. <laughs> You're just wondering what the fuck's happening. Yeah, no, I, I know how this works. Things have happened. But uh, uh, on a final thought, though, to be fair, the idea of using like the hyper, like the, the space drive to like propel his like lightsaber blade strike, like that is it's too high. Yeah, that, that is, is yeah. that is giant robot tier. It's not actually a giant robot, but it's some shenanigans and i hecking love yeah, it like again like like, like yeah promere ends with like the two guys going into a giant robot and fusing their power into the giant robot which causes the giant robot to be bigger than the planet which allows their power to consume like all throughout all the fire through the entire galaxy and then <sighs> it just implodes upon its and it's like yeah and then, and then I know Gurren Gur- Logan gets even more. I haven't even watched it yet, but I know I've heard the stories of how far it goes. It's the original, dude. It's the original fighting with galaxies. So it's like, yeah, it is. It is very much the most. Uh, it is the most auteur Star Wars since. Like I'm trying to think of like what what's the closest auteur Star Wars thing, like in Episode recent one. memory. Like by Mr. Episode, George Lucas. It's like I mean, yeah, yeah, because I, I, I guess Andor that 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 I guess Andor very much feels from the from what I've seen very much feels like it's from the uh the 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 grasps of Tony. Actually, no, no, a uh, book of Boba Fett has a lot of Robert Rodriguez isms in it uh, yeah. to the point th- to the point that people got mad. That there's Robert Rodriguez isms in it, and I'm like, yeah, see, this is why we can't have nice things. Ugh. And then uh, Solo was gonna have Lord and Miller isms in it, and then they were like, no, don't, don't, don't improvise my script. Get out of here. Uh, I'm still Uh-oh. waiting for that. I'm still waiting for the <laughs> the Lord and Miller release guy. the Solo cut. Yeah. But yeah, this one, yeah, it it it, it feels very auteur, and I am glad that they they just let they let Imaishi do his thing, and we got something really fun and cool out of it. So I give the twins an ah out of ten. <laughs> I give it a. Did you notice that? I guess Leo's pockets are meant to be pentagrams because it's a combination of triangles and squares. And so it's meant to be a combination of the ideals of the shapes of Promare out of three, <laughs> yes. I suppose. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I know, I know David's rating is an, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> like, da- David's rating, David's rating in order to be properly executed would need to involve red letters blasting themselves on the screen and David really not knowing what the <laughs> fuck's happening. Red letters? What? Do you, what? See, just don't, like that. Don't, don't, just don't like explain. That. Perfect. Let's move on. Okay. Oh, okay. I, Anime. The final thing we're going to talk about is the second Studio Trigger. Uh, the second Studio Trigger episode, The Elder. This one being directed by Masahiko Otsuka, who is the other co-founder of Studio Trigger with Imaishi, whose output doesn't really have... He, pretty much the only credits to his name in terms of production is directing 
Turning Girls and When Supernatural Battles Became Commonplace. Nice. Which is very interesting. I mean, I fucking love Turning Girls. Y'all should have all seen Turning Girls. Did your homework, right? So we have... Okay, so The Elder, this one takes place... <laughs> sometime shortly before the events of episode one. So this is after the Sith have been extinct, but the Sith, so they think, so this is during the time when the Jedi think the Sith are extinct, that they've been wiped out, but, oh, there are still, like, but they're starting to find out that, oh, there are still remnants of the Sith exist. So it focuses on uh, this, this Jedi Master and his Padawan. They're exploring the Outer Rim when they sense, oh, something's going on. They go travel to a planet, they explore the planet, and then find out that they there's this Sith elder that is residing on the planet. Uh, they end up, they, they do some shit. They end up fighting with him before he gets killed. He destroys all of the evidence and it ends with basically the pad, the, the guy being like, I said, I think the Sith are back. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. And this is how you're going to, this is how you're going to know. I'm not, I'm not biased because even though I went so far in praising the twins, Honestly, I think the elder is my least favorite of all these. Oh, because oh. I just think I think the I mean the storyline that they do tell is just very again, it's very simplistic. I think the characterization is very like I didn't really feel like there was that that much deep characterization the to, to pull from it. They just kind of very by the books in what they're doing. I also think the visuals are very with with how visually impressive pretty much every other episode and how like strikingly directed they all are, the fact that so much of this is just shot reverse shot, just still faces of characters like it felt like an anime episode, but I'm like Very if I was watching an anime and this was just one of the episodes, I'd be like, Yeah, that's fine. You wanna like save up your budget and like split up everything, but this is a short. It's like this is a standalone short story. It's like you I wanna see you like put your all into this, so to see it go very, yeah, to feel very cheapy, just kind of like, it kind of soured a lot of things. And I wonder if that is, again, because Otsuka, dis- despite his, like, again, he's the president, he's like one of the co-founders of Trigger, so he, 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 he obviously knows stuff, but it feels like he probably isn't as well-tuned in the creative process. Which I think is probably because it's like, oh, uh, I feel like you got uh, uh, Akira Amiyama was working on Dina Zenon at this moment, so he wasn't available. Uh, Yo Yoshinori took over for Cyberpunk while Imaishi was working on uh, Visions, so he wasn't available. They weren't calling back uh, Nishigori, the guy who made Franks, <laughs> so they weren't going to go for him. So pretty much the only person they had left on staff that, that they had for directing was Otsuka. So yeah. co-president, it was basically, you got to pull your weight here, buddy. It's like, fine, I'll do it myself. And yeah, yeah. I, I think it just ended up being, and, and Hey, he, he delivered a finished product. <laughs> Good for him. I, yeah, I do. I do like that trigger basically made, like I said, trigger made episode 10. I like that. They basically made also episode zero. Yeah. Like this is like the closest thing to being like, Oh, this is like the prelude to the Skywalker saga of being like, Oh, the Sith are in the background and the Jedi are like the, the Jedi are kind of incompetent in knowing how to handle it. And Oh, this is gonna, this is gonna be important later on. This would have been a better opening to episode one than the whole tax tariff blockade gungan bullshit that that like it's still fine and good but i mean it doesn't like you said doesn't throw into the what the actual plot of like the whole prequel actually ends up being but this sets it up way better <laughs> this one though i don't know like you said it feels very much uh like an episode out of an anime like this feels like 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 an episode of Cowboy Bebop, it feels like a filler episode amongst an anime. I mean, the characters are nicely designed, but like you said, personality-wise, these guys are some cardboard box characters. Like, the Jedi is only wise because he's older. The Padawan is only young because he's young. Like, they <laughs> even just joke around about one being old and one being young. 
the the Padawan's advantage is that the kids like him. Why? Because he's young and inexperienced. Like the the this one. Like if these characters had had other episodes of character development, I may have been invested. Or if like this had been the opening scene of a movie, then it wouldn't have even mattered. But I still would have been like, oh, those are a co- couple of cool guys that they introduced us to. But no, they are literally just two pieces of wood. Th- these are again. <laughs> To go back to Inferno Cop, these are some animated characters with less personalities than a couple shaking cutouts. And the shaking cutouts were only on my computer screen for a couple minutes, and I instantly fell in love with all the personality they were oozing. So it's kind of... I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's... I'd like to hope that it's a matter of having to hit up the C team, D team of, of animators to deliver a good quality short. Like, it's still good. It's just, uh, if you had shown it to me and been like, guess the studio, Trigger would have maybe been my third guess. Because I'd be like, nah, no way. It's too boring. But, I mean, it, but there's nothing bad about it. It's just very filler episode of the week for for a generic Jedi anime that never aired. I mean, I I can I can agree that it definitely it feels like this is the middle of something, and having having some more would would help. Uh, it, it, yeah, it does it does have that I guess sort of that prequel vibe, and I maybe in some ways I can uh, forgive <laughs> a little of the uh, more wooden bits because the prequels are full of wooden bits. So you can call it an homage is what you, <laughs> I think is the way to do it. Uh, it it feels like the most connected to actual Star Wars to me because it's like, here's two Jedi. They land on a planet. They find a Sith. They fight the Sith. The Jedi look like Jedi and that Sith guy looks pretty Sithy. And then... Hold, well, hold on. That Sith guy... I don't know. He, that Sith guy's looking like he's uh more than half Xehanort already. If you're asking yeah. my opinion, uh, he, well, you know, if you if you've been dabbling in the dark side for a long time, you're gonna look a little weird. Which does bring me to that force question I was gonna ask. Mm-hmm. In the Star Wars universe, is the dark side necessary? Like, are we playing Kingdom Hearts rules where like the dark side, yeah, is mostly bad, but it's still necessary? Like, how does Star Wars view? that right i i mean i think it it is it is that that yin and yang like the they they need to coexist see i guess the idea to a jedi is like oh how do you bring balance to the force you destroy the sith you destroy the dark side but that's not really like true balance it, it's it's more nuanced than that like the darkness has to exist. yeah no, no no i i played three five eight over two days yeah i, I ate the ice cream for all the days i learned yeah, that yeah yeah so it, it is it is like it 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 i think one of one of the one of the falls of the jedi was thinking it's it's super black and white when there is gray there is nuance but i mean it is still like oh yeah you're deep in the dark side like you're not having a good time it needs to exist but It'd be nice if you can uh, avoid it yourself. So, um, I mean, I, I mean, gotcha. it, it, it is especially. I mean, consider it's it's another coming around full circle because, I mean, the the plot of Birth by Sleep is literally just episode three, right? Like, it's not like not even not even subtle about the fact <laughs> that they just copied the plot of being all like, oh, here's the here's the the evil master guy who like who says he's good, but is obviously evil, who manipulates uh, the young people in training to go to the dark side so he can corrupt them. And uh, you and it ends in like a tragic thing of everybody either dying or getting stuck somewhere. And it's a prequel. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> and it's a prequel. And then we find out why Mickey doesn't have a shirt. Yeah. And then I saw, yeah, like uh, the, the elder guy. I saw the, I didn't think of Xehanort at first, but when I saw the elder, I'm like, that's, that's going to be James Hong or George Takei voice out of coming his mouth. And sure enough, it was James Hong. George Takei came up later. But it's like, yeah, it's like he has, he has a very George, James Hong face in that animation. And then, yeah, just the, here, here, the, here in his voice again. It's just like, oh, it, it's, 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 it's always fun hearing, hearing that. Hearing him play, hearing him play a dickhead. Dude, I was so happy then immediately sad when I heard his voice in Wendell and Wild. Yeah. Cause he's in literally he's in literally everything. I mean, like just this year, he was in Turning Red, he's in everything everywhere all at once. 
It's like you, you if you if if your movie doesn't have James Hong in it, you're doing something wrong. Like what were you doing? You missed it. I uh, I don't know the character designs are still pretty cool. I I thought it was super I thought it was super funny that like they end up in that planet and like the gimmick is that the people are shy, <laughs> but like they immediately talk to all the people right away anyway. So it's like okay, cool, whatever, super. They're, they're talking shy, <laughs> shyly, very shy, such shy talk. I I, I suppose the, the, um, the, for for the designs, it, uh, something I was th- I thought was really weird was that uh, the, the the Padawan guy Dan. Uh, he looks a lot like his English voice actor, who is the musician Jordan Fisher. Uh. It's like that was what made it weird because I'm like, wait, it kind of looks like him, but like, but but that was that was the dub voice. Like, did they know? Does he? I don't know. He might. He yeah. <laughs> and also the oh. and, and and the the the, uh, the 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 Jedi Master is David Harbor. So it's like, hey, David uh, David Harbor. There he is. <laughs> big guy, big guy, the, uh, the big guy. The the elders, uh, uh, Sith lightsaber dagger blades were pretty cool too. And his whole like stabbing style of fighting was pretty fun. Um, I I did think super weird too. Again, it also kind of shows that this was not an Imaishi production because, as opposed to the usual trigger fair of like you know keep pushing your limits nothing is beyond your reach the human spirit is infallible and will get you to wherever you're going i think it's wild that the elder a trigger production has the overall message that time consumes us all that power is only a temporary thing that fades with time and that eventually someone else will come around that's stronger than you i'm like trigger it's are you telling are you telling the people this? You can't just go telling people this. You're Studio Trigger. We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die someday. It's like shh, you're not supposed to tell us that. <laughs> I mean, you're supposed to say a giant robot shows up and we live forever. Maybe it's, maybe it's the subdued <laughs> reflection of of everything they've done. I, no, I, I don't it, know, I don't I, know it has to be, but it's just <laughs> wild know. that it's occurring in the middle of their Star Wars vision short. And it it. it, it, it it does. It does fit into like kind of the overall theme that we've been seeing repeating in in some of these shorts, which is about the nature of life and death. Is that yeah? We've had like the thing of like oh, experiencing visions of death, about like the whole idea of like seeking seeking a greater life, and how with this yeah, we have like the elder who's like who's lived for so long, and like this thing of like oh, he's trying to escape death, and like the whole thing about like oh, like the reason why he was defeated was because he was so old, and that time ultimately is the greatest detractor of our all uh, of us all, and like the whole thing of like oh yeah, the the the, the master like did every like oh the 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 apprentice wasn't able to do anything. The master did everything, but it's like, oh, eventually I'm going to wither down too. And you're going to su- supersede me. So it's like this whole thing of like, oh, like just th- this, this is like the natural course of the way things are supposed to be of just, oh, thing we, we grow, we grow and then we fade. And it's all about like just yeah. what we do. It's all about like what we do with the time that we have and that we don't take the time that we have for granted is ultimately what, uh, in a lot of ways, what, like, the nature of, I think, maybe Star Wars as a whole is what it's all about. It, uh, it also kind of stands in with the, the whole motif that we've been seeing of, like, uh, blurry lines on allegiances there, too. Whereas, you know, you had the musician who gave up being a Jedi to find his better life making music versus the master is a character who basically stuck to the Sith way, like, to his dying, exploded breath. So it kind of also shows, like, someone who, like, completely stuck to the the borderlines, even past the point of, like, in a time when the Sith were basically seen as extinct, he was still sticking to his Sith guns and blowing himself up over it. So I, I think that's also kind of interesting that even with all of these studios doing these different stories with no connection, that there were, there were some... Uh, some explored commonalities, though. It's because it's Star Wars. Oh. It, it's because you know it's it's a it's a pretty good genre, my dude. You know, for for every for every overused Wilhelm scream and Wookie growl, you know, sometimes there's a there's a good nugget of uh, decency there. Yes. J.K. It's a pretty good movie. Yeah. 
They're pretty cool movies, man. I gotta admit that they're pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you just sit and just watch them, and then you watch them again, and then you watch them again, and then you watch them again. <laughs> you watch them one more time, but this time you're gonna want to pause the movie every time you take some notes down, cause uh, the next time you're gonna want to compare those notes with that other viewing. Right, right. I uh, then, then you can right. get wild and watch different versions. You can watch the. You can watch some despecialized. You can watch some special edition. You can watch some fan cuts. You can watch all the cuts. You can do it. Do that. Just do it. Just watch them. Watch them all. Watch the cut. Watch the Star Wars. Watch Star, watch Star Wars. Wars. It'll define. Have you, my dude, have you ever heard of a Star <laughs> War? Star War. Uh, a lot of Star War. <laughs> Literally um, the inventor of the blockbuster. That's right. And then when after you watch Visions, you can watch uh, Ewoks, the the 1980s animated Ewok series, which you know <laughs> I I think has less of a budget. Uh, definitely isn't as as shiny or as wild as any of of these. It's more um well, it's a Saturday morning cartoon from the 1980s. That's what it is. <laughs> and, 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 and and if you want another Star Wars anthology thing, you could go check out the uh, the the holiday specials, like the, the 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 short, like the the animated short that was also included on Disney Plus. It's its own separate thing. The one with the one the one with the first appearance of Boba Fett. That's, That's right. That's on there. That is on there. The uh, I forgot what, the name the, of it. It's the, the faithful Wookiee or something. Like it's it's yeah. something like that. Oh, I guess after all of these came out, uh, like uh, a week or two ago, there there is that little Studio Ghibli. Thing. That's right. That did literally just come out like very recently, as of this recording. It's like yeah, there was the a three minute uh, Grogu short that was made by Studio Ghibli. Mm-hmm. So there was another anime what? thing we got. Yep, it's only three oh, minutes. See that. Yeah, it's a really short. Huh. Yeah, it was like a big thing of like the, like they anna- like it was like on Twitter being like, oh, Studio Ghibli's partnering with Lucasfilm, and everyone was freaking out, being like, oh my god, what could it be? And then the next day, it's just it's a three minute Grogu short, and everyone went, oh. I mean, that's still not a bad right. deal. But I mean, yeah, I wouldn't mind. It was, uh, it was a yeah, full... yeah, it was yeah, it was cute for what it was. But again, it's like I feel like it was a short that literally anyone could have. Like the biggest thing was that Grogu interacts with these little guys that are very clearly supposed to be the little sprites from Spirited Away. It's like oh, uh, it's a it's a it's a reference, but no, nothing like super. Be like, yeah. I'd... Wait, hold up, yeah, hold on. Be, I want to make sure I want to get you correct here. Are, do they look like they're from Spirited Away, or do they look they look like they're from Princess Mononoke? I'd say they look more. I, look, I think they look more like the ones <laughs> from Spirited Away, not the not the All things right. from Mononoke. All right. All right. But yeah, I think I I, I give the elder a. A uh, out of ten, because <laughs> yeah, it's like a again, it's 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 a little thing of like I think yeah, there are some interesting ideas uh, in it, but it's just I think the presentation is just too kind of flat uh, for its own good, and I think a little bit more characterization, and, both in the characters themselves and the presentation of the visuals and everything, I think would have been benefited it uh, much more greatly. Yeah, I can't think of anything clever. I'm just giving this three out of ten. It's good. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I'm I'm giving it a a Star Wars out of ten. Out of Star Wars. I'm, Star Wars. I'm giving it Star. I'm giving Wars. it a Star Wars. Well, you know. <laughs> uh, and that leaves us. We we got through all the visions. Wow. We did it. Hooray! I had a vision. We do this. Right. Oh. Just shy of four hours. Um. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you literally could have watched how many of these shorts? All of them? No, Wait, no. Yeah. maybe let's multiple do, times. Let's yeah, cool, do some every math. short. Yeah. Well, every short is about ten or twenty minutes. So okay. So oh, damn, man, this is like worse than when our promo review was longer than the movie. Yeah, damn it. Let's do some math. Okay, so first one, sixteen <laughs> no, minutes. No, let's not. <laughs> uh, the duel. Remember, this also includes credits. So uh, the duel, sixteen minutes. Uh, Tattooing yeah. Rhapsody, sixteen minutes. The twins, nineteen. Uh, the village bride, twenty. Uh, the ninth ninja, uh, ninja. The ninth Jedi is twenty-five minutes uh toby is 15 uh the elder is 18 lop and ocho is 22 and uh aka aka kiri uh it's 15 it's 15 minutes for the last one 
Okay, and a lot of those are credits. So I'm just going to minus a bunch. So I'm going to say, I'm going to be generous and say about two and a half hours. Oh. And it's probably less than that. We can... Uh, <laughs> you could have just watched the anime. The anime. <laughs> and in, in some way, it is kind of like the, the Gendy Tartakovsky uh, Star Wars Clone Wars, where the whole thing is just like two hours. Like, even though it's like, because of all the micro episodes, the whole thing is like a little over two hours. So it's like, you can watch that as just like episode 2.5 if you want. Yeah. Uh. It, uh, it is, it's easier to watch that between two and three than watching seven seasons of a show, even though the... <laughs> Uh, but uh yeah 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 it's they're 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 short bursts i think what makes it easier is you don't have to watch you don't really have to watch them in an order you don't have to watch them all at once you can just don't have to watch all of them if you, you want need... you don't have to watch all of them if you don't want right you don't Maybe, have to watch yeah. any of them if you don't want i guess uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um i mean i'm glad even if some of this wasn't uh for me uh i'm i'm definitely glad that they all exist and that they're all out there and i wouldn't mind more i mean i know they said a volume two is coming but i wouldn't mind i wouldn't mind there being more of the ones that are definitely left open-ended like the ones that were it feels like there should be a a part two or a part three i give it a shot more kaleidoscoping lightsabers all the colors rainbow lightsabers for all right i want Tiny American flags for others. I want I want someone yeah. to make a house completely out of lightsabers and be like, okay, just be careful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's where we're going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the, I, well, since we are at least definitely getting at least one more uh, anime Star Wars thing since they've yeah the, one of the one of the episodes in Volume Two will be from Japan. So I'm like, I wonder if they are gonna get one of if they're going to get one of these artists back and they're going to either do a new one or do a sequel of them, or if they're going to get a completely diff, like I don't think they're going to because those poor animators, but I'm always thinking like, like what if Mappa, like what if, what if the studio Mappa did a star Wars, like if they got the director of Jujutsu Kaisen to do a star Wars thing, I would just be like, that would be like that. That would be like a, a visual treat that would be on the level of competing with uh, Imaishi. It'd be amazing. Yeah, and then all the other studios again, like ign- ignorant American, well, I- I- ign- ignorant English speaker. I don't know uh, a lot of like what 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 uh, animation studios you got in like other countries like Ireland and Spain, South Africa. But it's also like, oh hey, like I wonder what uh, an animation studio over there, given the free reign to do something as bit as ginormous as Star Wars, like how how they end up like do anything of being like oh yeah you're 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 you're, you're just a small up and coming like thing on like the in, a, in a, on another side of the planet that like nobody else knows about and suddenly disney rings your doorbell and says want to make a star war and you just kind of like explode and being like ah uncle disney just shows up and is like here's 20 dollars go make a star war i'd make a star war okay, come on just one I, I yeah, I'll make an anime. I'll, I'll do a short. It's gonna have a uh, Jack Jack Jacks in it. The, Jacks. the rabbit. <laughs> Fuck you, Lucas. David, uh, do do not lie to me. We all know all you would do is just submit the sad AM <laughs> cartoon and just be like, it's Star Wars. It's my Star Wars. I swear, it's Star Wars. Oh man, it's true. Wow. Hey, the. Sad AM was inspired by the best. It was inspired by Sonic, and it was inspired by Star Wars. And a little bit of uh, lifting the Back to the Future music. <laughs> it's true. Just you, you listen to it, and that's what it is. But that that's an entirely different subject. For uh, another four-hour-long video. Oh, I could talk about Sad AM for four hours. Right. <laughs> I, I'll be excited to see just what the different cultures around the world bring to, again, that Star Wars formula. We've already seen what happens when you mix an entirely different whole historical context to, like, sword fighting warriors who live by an oath and creed and how that kind of at the same time changes everything but also it doesn't kind of almost makes everything a weird like fun mirror mm-hmm. but then also means that it opens it up to different questions and different ideas that weren't originally explored in the original like cultural paradigms and so i don't know i think it'll be super exciting to see what we now see from this global perspective of star wars because star wars is a global phenomenon 
there is not a country in this world that you can go to that you will not find a small child like born in this century that does not know like a lightsaber sound like it's it's universal so like to see the, the different international views of Star Wars I'm excited to see what that brings I'm hoping they're allowed the same kind of freedom so that there's not there doesn't end up uh, a sort of homogeny due to uh, certain feelings or stuff like that but I hope it ends up being a good collection of fun stories about the Star Wars and how they're fought and about the families it affects. Oh, and also related that uh, I didn't realize that I believe an art book of Visions just came out very recently. So Ooh. I think that would, that would be something uh, like I, th- I think it was uh, according to this. It's like it says it's supposed to be out. Either it came out a while. I, I don't know if it came out a while ago or if it just came out now. But it's a thing of like, oh, like I think I think that that that, that alone is like a, something that'd probably be cool to check out. Probably has a lot of good info. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I don't know if you guys did it, but like I did, uh, I did like a very quick ranking of like, oh, this is how I would uh, rate uh, the episode. So like really quickly, at the bottom is the elder, followed by uh, the village bride, uh, Tatooine Rhapsody. Akakiri, Lopinocho, Toby, the Duel, the Ninth Jedi, and the Twins. I'd probably put the Rhapsody a bit higher. I'd put Akakiri a bit lower. I have no idea, so I'll just say yes to both. At least, what was your favorite? Because I don't think we said what we. I don't think we said what your favorite. Uh, my uh, my of favorite them. item. Um. I, you know what my my favorite is. Probably either the one with the either Lop or the Village Bride. I think like overall, oh. like you know, because it's sort of that balance between uh, Star War- Star Wars and the anime. So you know, I I I didn't hate yeah. any. I mean, like I don't think I hated any of them. There's just some where I'm like, this is I don't. What is happening? Again, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's fine. No, no, that all makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So I mean, it's it'd be one of I I think one of those two because of the balance between Star War and um, personal uh, fingerprints on the yeah, Star Wars. That's yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, I think I think we're good. I think we're good to close this off. We 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 did we did a lot of talking. <laughs> I don't I don't know how the, I don't know how this final episode is going to turn out. I'm going to I'm going to do a lot of picking and prodding. See how this goes. W- will this be the longest episode so far? We shall see right right now Frank's was three and a half hours. So we'll see if this is will end up being longer or shorter than that. But okay, next next time because it turns out in between our waiting between last episode and this episode Studio Trigger went ahead and actually released a brand new series so we we should probably go and check that out so join us next time for a trip into the cyberpunkiest cyberpunk that has ever cyberpunked Cyberpunk Edgerunners Runners.